Thanks for tuning in. If you're watching on YouTube, be sure to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date on all our latest video content. If you're watching on local Gov TV, be sure to visit their website to see all of the content made for you by your local governments. Alamance County is pleased to present the Alamance County Commissioner's Meeting. What's good, sir? How old are you? Oh, call the meeting to order. Okay. If we'll all bow our heads, we're going to wait on Mr. Walker. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Our Heavenly Father, we appreciate the opportunity and all we appreciate all the blessings that you have given to this county and to this board. Please guide and direct us throughout this meeting. Give us the wisdom to make intelligent and smart decisions. All these things we ask in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We have two public speakers uh, on agenda matters. And um, Ms. Dixon? That's me. Mr. Dixon, sorry. Come, no. Please come forward. Okay. Yeah. And to all the speakers, you have uh, three minutes, and, um, and we have a hook, and it, actually I'll push the button and you go through the seat. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> We'd ask you to respect the three minutes. Absolutely. <laughs> Is it going to be... Over here? It's, it's on, the, on both screen. sides. Okay, I didn't rehearse this, so we'll see, we'll see how it goes. It's a big piece of paper. Yeah, it's, it, it should, we should be okay. <laughs> Thank you. All right, uh, Bradley Dixon, uh, and I appreciate you guys hearing me tonight. Um, I live in Burlington, and I'm here to speak on the redistricting line of the uh, Northeast Alamance Volunteer Fire Department. Um, I was a firefighter uh, on this fire, de fire department and one of the top call runners for several years. Um, and in that time, it was overwhelmingly obvious that uh, calls in that area of the district um, were often, we were often met with our mutual aid partners uh, arriving to the scene first. So um, that, that information is available through communications. Uh, Fire Marshal's office, um, and that was a first-hand uh, account that I did notice. Um, I would like to point out that uh, the the prop properties that are being considered for redistricting are um, I, I've, I've taken some mileages for you, um, which you may have already been presented with, but I have it uh, from the parcel to the Hall River Fire Department line or the Hall River Fire Department. It is three miles from the parcel to the Pleasant Grove Fire Department line. It is 4.1 miles. So it is 1.1 miles longer into the district that is being requested to be extended. So it, uh, response times would be even, even further to that property. Um, if you allow this to go forth, you're setting precedent for other fire departments to use this method to gain district in in different areas. Uh, so I would urge you to not do that. Um, in 2020, I believe it was uh, a candidate for fire chief was requested that permission to uh, do the same thing that is being requested by the individual that is. Uh, asking for the district change and no assistance was given for that uh, and uh, 
it does appear to me that this is personal gain. It does not appear that this is in benefit of the community in any way. The fact that it is widening the district that is already much closer to Hall River. Um, and I want to leave you with this note. Um, say you guys all live in Alamance County because that is a requirement to be a commissioner. Um, say one of you decides to buy a, a farm over just in the edge of Alamance County but on the district line and you petition to have the county changed to Alamance so that you can keep your commissioner uh, position. Is that going to work? That's, a, that's what I want to leave you with. <laughs> thank you guys. And thank you. Okay, Mr. Vines. And Sheriff, you're going to be next for a presentation. <laughs> Good afternoon, Commissioners. Uh, my name is Henry Vines, and I live at 3450 Isaac Drive in Snow Camp. Uh, Commissioners, I'm standing here before you tonight. I just wanted to talk. I seen where y'all were going to discuss tonight the Diversion Center. Um, when I seen this, I, I've called and talked to most of you. Uh, didn't get a chance to talk to Miss Thompson, but uh, I do have some concerns about this. Um, we had a stepping up program uh, that was introduced about, I think, three years ago, and there was approximately three million dollars that had been put up for donation to build to build and get this operation and get this going. And for whatever reason, uh, it never got there. Uh, so I'm, I'm thinking when I talked to the sheriff that this, this uh, stepping up program was supposed to address the same issues that the diversion center is, and that is mental health with incarcerated people. And given that opportunity to, for them to go there instead of going into the jail, which will alleviate a lot of problems at the sheriff's department and um, free up beds. I think it's a good idea that we do this, but I think when we look at this, that we need to take into account as what this is gonna mean for the cost to the county and the, and the citizens, because this place is not gonna operate uh, I would love for it to operate freely and under its own power, but I don't think it will. Uh, and as you're looking forward to going through and building a building, uh, I certainly would rather you build a building and it be ours than lease it and then have to try to buy it back. Uh, there's a lot of opportunities out here uh, with buildings that are in place that could maybe be retrofitted to fit this need. Uh, I would uh, recommend that uh, y'all put Mr. Lashley back in charge of finding a building <laughs> because he done a fine job on the um, Board of Elections, saved us about $2 million, and I appreciate that. Uh, so as you move forward with this, I hope you'll take all these things into consideration and the effects it's going to have on the taxpayers of the county as well. And I think that's not a little bit. Uh, I thought I heard the bell. I thought I heard the bell ring. But anyway, um, as I said, you know, in the public comment, you know, I, I hope that uh, as we spend this ARC of money that we won't be creating something that's going to cost uh, taxpayers down the road a lot of money as far as you know increasing property taxes because that's going to adverse affect everyone. Thank, Thank you for your time. Thank you, Henry. And we would announce as uh, just someone to my right just said you don't have to use all your minutes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, that's my Mr. Johnson. Yes, sir. Sheriff Johnson. <laughs> you ready? Sure. Mr. Sweet. Family can come up with you too if you want to. <laughs> you know. John, where's this at? It's uh it's right here, Commissioner. Under uh under the invocation. Got it. This is good. Got it. 
Uh, commissioners, we have with us this evening Deputy Carly Swiggett from the Alamance County Sheriff's Office and his family. And at this time, I'd like to read the Life Saving Award uh, document pertaining to his actions. Alamance County Sheriff's Office requests that the Board of Commissioners present one Life Saving Award at the November 15th meeting. The summaries of the events are as follows. On August 14th, 2021, the Sheriff's Office responded to a disturbance with reports of a stabbing. Deputies arrived to secure the area and Deputy Swiggett located the victim who suffered from stab wounds on the left side of his torso, his right arm, and his left thigh. He immediately responded by utilizing a chest seal, covering the victim's torso wound, and then began to wrap his right arm. EMS then arrived and transported the victim to the hospital for surgery. Deputy Swiggett reacted quickly using his own personal chest seal kit to treat the victim who may have suffered a much more serious outcome without Deputy Swiggett's life-saving measures. Congratulations, Deputy. like to give you this life-saving award. It says presented to Deputy Carly Swiggett. You recognize your action that resulted in a life saved on August 14, 2021. Thank you for your service and thank you for representing the Sheriff's Office thank you, sir. professionally, sir. Thank you, sir. This is a life-saving award that will go on your shirt. And so you have saved someone's life. Thank you, sir. Thank you for your service to Alamance County and thank you for your hard work. Thank you. And if you'd like to go ahead and hand that on him, you have the opportunity now to do it. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe <it's> tough. <laughs> Just don't stick him, we don't need any more. <laughs> 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 Like, like I said, if you'd like to later in the video. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a good idea. Sounds like a good idea. Oh, should that go in your shirt? I'll get you in. <laughs> get the kid picture. Do you switch? Do you Thomas, can you just so I, this is her phone. This is his fiance's phone, so this is not my phone. <laughs> Great, thanks. Great. Are there any commissioners' responses? Thank you, sir. Are there any commissioners' responses to the public speakers? <laughs> Moving right along, we have an agenda. Is there a motion? Motion to approve. Second. A motion second. Any discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Thank you. We have a consent agenda. Do we have a motion as to the consent agenda or any comment? So moved. Second. Any discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Okay, both have 5-0 votes. Thank you. If our county attorney would just address the removal of item number seven, please. Sure, I'd be happy to. So um, the planning board uh, last Wednesday evening heard a variance. Um, the ad in the paper, which is required by state law, um, it was put in as a notice of evidentiary public hearing. So when there is a variance to be considered, it is not a public hearing. It certainly takes place at a public meeting, but it is a quasi-judicial hearing. And so the, the notice was not correct. 
And so that's why we you can't hear it tonight because we have to notify the public correctly, obviously. So uh, tomorrow we're going to go through. There's actually has to be two publications on very uh, special uses and variances, and um, we'll figure out those time parameters given your upcoming meetings, and we'll re-advertise it correctly, and it will come forward to you in that way. And we thank you. Um, we appreciate this lady and her firm, uh, and they're trying to keep us straight, and there have been some changes um, from previous times. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, um, Ms. Cattle. Good evening, board. Uh, first item I have for you on the agenda is a planning board member that has been recommended for removal by the planning board. It's uh, the only concern here is attendance. Part of the planning board bylaws state if more than two meetings or two consecutive meetings are missed, the board can take up action and they do make a recommendation to you all. You all seat the planning board members. So before you tonight is Ms. Daniel Walker to be uh, removed from the board just for attendance purposes. Motion to approve. I'm on that board as a non-voting member, but I'll second that motion. Any comments? Has there been any response from the member? No, sir. Okay. And this has been, been since March, I believe, is what we put. Uh, what's her last board? board for since January? Um, I don't think I've ever seen the lady at a single meeting. Sorry. Okay. Any further discussion? All in favor of removing this particular applicant, uh, signify or individual, please signify by saying aye. 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 Unanimous. Thank you. I think you're still up. Yeah, I thought I'd just hang out for just one more minute. Uh, planning Board also has some appointments. Uh, planning Board appointments expire at the end of a calendar year, so we try to get those appointments straight before that calendar year runs out so we don't have any gap in attendance. We have uh, two current members that are asking for another term. Planning Board only allows for two terms and you have to come off for a year. This would be them requesting to be for their second term. That's uh, Mr. Poe and Mr. Willoughby. We also have several members that have termed out or did not need or didn't want to actually ask for their positions again. So we have three new members that are looking for appointment and that's Mr. Pierce, Mr. Dodson and Mr. Bayer. These were all recommended approvals by planning board and that was a unanimous vote at their board meeting. And can I ask those individuals, uh, I see two of the members here, are, there, are the other three here? Yes, sir. Please uh, stand. Yes. Yeah. And just give your names one, one at a time, please, sir. I'm Vaughn Willoughby. All right, and you're currently on the board. Yes, sir. And you want to uh, repeat? It could be the board's pleasure, yes, sir. All right. And I'm Anthony Pierce, uh, new member uh, requesting a appointment. All right. I'm Bill Poe. I'm going to be re if uh, that works out tonight. All right. And the other two are not present, is that right? Right. One has had surgery and the other one wasn't able to be here, but... Um, I can tell you the planning board's recommendation, and then if y'all have questions specifically, I might can help with that. I would indicate, thank you, gentlemen. Uh, I would indicate that I heard the interviews and uh, presentations of those that wanted to be there uh, and want to be on this board. They were very, very well qualified individuals, in my opinion. Uh, and having heard each one, each one make a presentation, um, and I plan to vote for these five. So. <laughs> Uh, Mr. Chairman, I'd, I'd, I'd just like to make a <clears throat> comment, excuse me. Uh, I thought we had really some high quality applicants oh, yeah. turn out for this and I just, it just uh, warms my heart to see that we have citizens willing to come out and serve the community in a fashion such as this and I'm, I would like to make a motion that we approve the recommendation from the planning board. And I'll second that motion. Any other questions, discussions? Ms. Kyle, you mentioned that you could provide information about the planning board. What, what was the If y'all have questions, I mean, that, like he said, they went through interview process, and some, Mr. Pierce in particular, he's actually put an application in a while ago and has talked to the planning board a couple times. But this is, as he said, a board that is looking for some good credential people. Uh, one of the guys is actually an engineer, 
and the other guy actually works for um, DOT. So he gives some background that we don't currently have on the board. So that would be really helpful, especially with things like we were talking about the variance for the garage that we heard last week. It, we've got some people that have a good background. Mr. Poe has a construction background. Uh, Mr. Cobb that already sits on the board, he actually deals in development and septic septic systems and footings and things like that. So we're getting more diversity on our board that will give us a great background for the, what y'all know is a lot of projects going on, a lot of future growth that we're looking at. And I would indicate to the general public that we as commissioners received a packet of materials that includes uh, all the applications. All, exactly, all the applications and background material, things of that sort. So uh, we're not just shooting in the blind with this. That was a reason for my comment. So. <laughs> yeah, those are things that we, like I said, the commissioners receive, and that's it. Any further questions, discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 It's unanimous. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Payne. <laughs> Good evening, commissioners. Uh, I want to clear up maybe some confusion, probably from my end. On uh, a, I noticed in the packet this morning there was two letters, one from October 19th, um, and also one that was submitted last week concerning this redistrict of this property out Pleasant Grove. I'm gonna call it Pleasant Grove. It's Northeast Alamance. People call it Pleasant Grove. That's how their trucks or some marked out there. Um, I talked to Sean Tenser in Hall River about this, and he was under the impression that he was going to lose a lot of tax money by redistricting this, this uh, two parcels out there. Um, after consulting with him, we were going to put it on the agenda for November 1st. And then after I'd done some investigation, I did find out that the only money to be lost by Hall River was going to be fire tax money, not the other money that goes in general fund. So talking to him, he said, do it the easiest way. I contacted Vernon Ward, North Carolina. Office of State Fire Marshal, um, and he said that if Fall River is willing to give up these parcels to Pleasant Grove, um, we could bring it to the board for their approval. Um, this has been done three times in the past four years. 2017, Swepsonville gave up approximately 80 properties to Mebane Fire Department. Early 2020, Chorning, Thompson Mill Road, a gentleman was concerned about his taxes down there and his insurance. They gave up approximately 80 parcels to Eli Whitney. And also same year, it went effect uh, July 1st of 2020. Jordan Meadows Subdivision off McCray Road, they had the four parcels at the end of that dead end road that as the crow flies, they was in Fawcett's Fire District, but for Fawcett to respond to those areas, they had to come to North Central Fire District to come down that dead end road. So they agreed to give us over to that fire department. Uh, Chief Anderson is here tonight. Um, him, between him and his father, they have over 50 years of uh, public service to Pleasant Grove Fire Department. His dad, Wesley Anderson, is a retired detention officer here with the county. Mm -hmm. uh, in order for Jason to be a chief officer, he has to remain in Pleasant Grove's Fire District. Uh, he has sold his house out 62 South, <coughs> and he wants to move into his grandparents' house, which is located at uh, 1809 North NC 49. Right beside him is his father's house. It's located at 1775 North NC49. You can see on the map on the right side, the parcel at the top is an in and out parcel. It's in Green Levels District, but the right side of it is in Pleasant Grove Fire District already. So in order for Chief Anderson to remain a chief officer at that fire department, he has to live in their district. I talked to Sean Tenser again about this. Uh, he has agreed to give up the two parcels on the right, 1775 and 1809, to Pleasant Grove Fire Department in order for him to remain chief for his department. As far as uh, presidents from uh, previous, there was some talk last year about um, moving this district, but it never made it to me. I'm doing my due diligence tonight to bring this before you. Last year, uh, I don't know if it went before their boards or not. It's got to be approved by both boards. Um, and that would have been Foss and Pleasure Grove, and it was never taken to those boards. So with Sean saying, yes, sir, they will be uh, glad to give those th two parcels up. And the board at Pleasant Grove saying they will take those on. Uh, if this is approved tonight by you, it will go before OSFM and DOI for approval, the tax maps. CECOM maps and everything will be updated and the district would change probably four to six months after approval. 
as far as the fire tax, it's roughly two hundred dollars. Like I said, that that Hall River would be losing to Pleasant Grove. Now they're picking up two. Of, they're swapping out two other two properties. Bus. They're not. They're not swapping any. Oh, no, they're not. No, sir. They are going to. Um, that's the new new map on the right. Pleasant Grove will be taking over those parcels. Hall River will, will expect nothing in return. How much is the loss? Roughly two hundred dollars fire tax. Uh, as far as the mileage, there is a 0.9 mileage difference. Uh, it will be further out, but it will be um, a chief officer on that end of the district. So, Bay a Park. chief officer on that end of the district, which they don't have now, if he moves into his grandparents' house. Now, Mr. Dixon indicated in his presentation earlier that this a similar situation occurred, I think. Uh, Mr. Dixon, what year was it? In 2020. In it 2020. Yeah, it was verbally mentioned, um, and was not. It did not go through. All right. Verbally mentioned to the fire department. To the fire department. So it didn't ever come to our office. It did not. Right. Miss Haygood, can you confirm that, or do you know anything about it? If it if it happened at the fire department level and was uh, not uh, determined to bring to the commissioners <coughs> or to um, Fire Marshal Payne's attention, then we wouldn't have known about that at, at uh, the county manager's office. I have a question. Several. Okay, from what I'm understanding, this particular area is going to be further out, correct? Further out from Pleasant right. Grove. And what I'm also hearing is that sometimes Hall River and Mebane sometimes get to this area, or some of the areas you already have in Pleasant Grove, and that just can be the luck of traffic. But right. that usually, sometimes that happens. Those two departments will staff 24-7. Okay. And Pleasant Grove is not. Um, from Eli Whitney, I am. Um, I know how amazing volunteer fire departments are. The, the courage and commitment of a volunteer could save the world because you do it to make a difference and save the world and save lives. And there's no difference from a volunteer fire department going to a chaotic situation and facing that than somebody in the city of Burlington or city of Graham. My concern is the phone calls that I've gotten that are telling me that um, the current chief, which I know none of you guys, so don't don't set my house on fire. <laughs> I don't know any of you. I just admire all of you for what you do and your commitment. But what I'm hearing, and maybe this is just because I'm hearing it through this type of perspective, is this needs to be given to Pleasant Grove in order for a current chief that has decided to sell his home and move to this area and live on your grandfather's home. I think that's the best way to do it, the home, old homestead. But in order for this current chief to remain current and chief, we have to switch this district that's to accommodate correct. that. That's correct. That's um, that's kind of like situational rules, and we kind of make them up as we go. And I have issues with like uh, I think it was Mr. Dixon said about commissioners, and like that's kind of like, and I know none of y'all would do this. If I bought a llama farm in Caswell County and wanted to be a llama farmer. I do not expect you to declare war on that part of Caswell and annex it and take <laughs> over so I can keep this position. And I know that's silly, but it does. It has the same principle. I don't want anybody to lose their leadership position because if you are a leader, you have stood up and you stepped up to make a difference for whoever you're serving. But I just, I just don't know about this, and that's because we. I personally have gotten several phone calls from all around the whole situation, and it, it just it. It's got a bad appearance to it. It's almost like it's personal. And I just need to make sure it's not because anybody that's in those three blocks there, if their house is on fire or their kids just OD'd or somebody's killed themselves at their house, I need to know that this fire department is going to be there first. So that's my comments. I got a question about the. Uh, um, I'm really not knowledgeable enough about the responses done by rural fire departments. But if you've got a chief that lives in the far end of a department, is he supposed to be on site in a fire situation at, before anybody else, or does he have other other uh, no, deputy he's a, chiefs within his department? He's got deputy chief and assistant chiefs him. also, right. As it stands now, he's at the other end of our district, on yeah. 62 North. He's on the other end he's of the He's on the other end, right. So they do have assistant chiefs and deputy chiefs and captains that also respond. Mm -hmm. Okay. Too bad his dad's house wasn't in the 
center of the district, right? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Mr. Turner, you have uh, questions? <clears throat> yeah. Uh, did you say that the that Hall River Hall River Fire Department provides twenty four seven coverage, but Pleasant Grove does not? That's correct. And we're talking they about they are staffed during the day, and then volunteers around the clock, seven days a week. They're staffed with part time personnel during the day. Grove is. Yes, sir. During the day. Now, if it's a house fire, you're gonna get multiple station response there. Mm -hmm. All right. And we're talking about redistricting three properties? Yes. And what's the opinion of each of those property owners? Uh, two of my family. Um, one's the chief. Here's one of them. His dad's one of them. Right. They're four. The other one is they're are already in Pleasant Grove's district, but the front of their property is in Green Levels Towns. Right. So how does redistricting these affect other property owners around them? It does not. All right. Thank you. Leslie, you have any questions? No, sir. But thank you. Just to add, I just I can't thank the volunteer firemen in this county and women enough because I can't tell you how many times they literally saved my father's life when he had a heart attack in Eli Whitney. They are at the top. <clears throat> For my clarification, I can see I've got a copy of the map in yes, my sir. hand. I can see it there as well. Um, so you're adding to the <clears throat> what color is that? Purplish. Yes, sir. Whatever. The one, two, three tracks of, of land. That's correct. That are, I guess, Highlighted. 1841, 1835, which is one track, right. 1809, and 1775. That's correct. And that would be added to the Pleasant Grove area. That's correct. All right. And part of 1841 and 1835 are already in. It's already in. Yes, sir. Correct. That's That's back half of them. Yeah. And which parcels um, would Chief Anderson be involved in? Uh, his dad lives in 1775. He would be moving into 1809 right there in the middle. All right. So really the property owners that are involved and would move from one to the other are the landowners themselves. Two of the three. Pretty much. Yes, Two of the three. Yeah, and then one's already in the district. Yes, sir. All right. Tax rate, they would better their self. Tax rate in Hall River is 13 and a half cent, and Northeastern is 10 cent. So it'd be a little difference. ISO rating is basically one point difference. Talked to the insurance guy today, and he said that is, it does not make a difference like it used to. I don't have anything else. Does anyone else have questions? So the, is there a motion? Just one more question. Does the uh, the property owner that splits, does that property owner have an opinion about changing the uh, the parcel that's not currently in Pleasant Grove? Well, the one in by, behind it is already fire right. tax for right. Pleasant Grove. Right. The front, I could not pull it up as a parcel to see where the fire district was. It's hard to tell, but it looks is, like the house may actually be in Pleasant Grove Fire District already. Well, that's what I was going to say. Is the, is, the, is the property that is not yet in Pleasant Grove improved or not? I'm sorry? The property that is not yet in Pleasant Grove for the, in that top parcel, is that improved or not? I do not know. Do you know, Chief, is there someone living in that front part on the road? Yes. Yes. Now, it looks like it is in two but a majority of that single track that's uh, not involving the Anderson family right. uh, is the majority of it's in Pleasant Grove already. That's correct. It comes off a winding trail which runs parallel to that side. And we have no uh, information about that property owner's opinion about this proposal. We do not. I talked to, uh, like I said, Vernon Ward Estate said it. Um, you do not have to let them know. I did not go out there to talk to no one. Um, and I may have misspoken. It looks like there may be actually actually be a um, construction of some sort. Right. He said someone lives out there. Out front. <laughs> right. He did say someone lives out there. Mr. Chairman, I move that we table this discussion until we know the the, uh, the opinion of the property owner who will be affected by the change to his particular or his or her potential parcel. I'm just not comfortable making a decision for somebody without them notice that their fighters is going to change. And I concur with that okay. statement. Um, board, it's up to this board. Do we table it? 
so I it's fine to do it. Is there a certain deadline that this needs to be for like uh, anybody being instated? Is this have anything to do with bylaws at the place? I'll have to ask the chief for that. Station? Uh, January. December. December 1st, December 31st. It will be uh, December the 4th. December 4th. I'm sorry. December 4th. We have a meeting on December 6th. Is that too late to make this decision? December 6th? Correct. The, it'll be the same same exact time. Same, All right. Same meeting. That's a morning meeting, correct? Yes, sir. It, it is, is a morning, morning meeting, and uh, it's the first Monday right. in December. So this board is now requesting to be tabled until December 6th. Is that correct? That's my motion. I'll, I'll second that motion. Do we have a second? I'll second that motion. We have a motion and second. Any further discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 It's unanimous. Okay. Thank you. We did not make a decision. This is simply carried over to uh, December the 6th, and uh, Fire Marshal will be back with us uh, hopefully on December 6th. And, and we thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. And I appreciate your telephone call earlier uh, gave me information that I needed. Thanks. Okay. Um, special, you're, you're next. I am. So just by way of background and a little history, for as long as counties and cities have had ordinances, they would typically, for those ordinances that they would attach criminal penalties to, have one section within the code. And it would say something along the lines of, if a particular ordinance does not have a prescribed penalty attached to it, then the default is this one section here. And for reasons that are not worth going into tonight, the General Assembly has been looking at this issue for a number of years. And they passed a law last session saying you can't do it in that way anymore. Instead, what you must do is within each particular ordinance that you are going to criminalize, you must state it within that ordinance, which really isn't a bad idea because then it gives the public a clear direct understanding of what a penalty might be and then there were some other areas within the control that boards and councils have that they said there can't be criminal penalties for sorts of things so we went through your entire code and figured out which ones needed to have some amendments in order to comply with state law this particular state statute also requires there be two readings. That's a little unusual, but not unheard of. <laughs> so that is why it is before you today to vote on to make those amendments. We're not changing the ordinances itself other than simply putting those penalties in them. And then it would need to come back to you again at your meeting on December 6th. Motion to approve. Wait, okay, yeah, sorry. <laughs> second. Motion second now. Sorry, John. Content. No, you're good. Um, <laughs> I just have some questions, and I'm, I'm glad to see this because it's like a real set of rules, which are going to be so good, especially with some of the things that I've been concerned about. Um, have we had ordinances? for all these things before, but we just weren't clear as to what would happen to you if you did those, you broke those ordinances? I wouldn't say they weren't. Yes, to answer your first questions, none of these are new ordinances. Okay. These are all, have already been on Alamance County's books. But what is making it clearer, and instead of this default to some other section in the code to know what the penalty is because it was silent within that particular section, we're now putting it clearly in each section so somebody knows what the penalty is. Okay. Um, so we've had ordinances and we've known about them. And when we've had people to contact us, say almost two years ago, a year and a half ago in May, um, and things didn't happen, and then it gets totally out of control, and then things still don't happen. Um, is that on the ordinance or is that on our departments? 
without knowing the facts of a particular okay. case. I could okay. not answer that. You know what I'm talking about. I know you know what I have I'm a talking suspicion. About. I know you know what I'm talking about. Okay, let's just take abuse of animals. Let's just look at that one. Okay. Okay, so um, when we have this same situation on Barbie Street in Burlington that has just been an enormous money pit, just awful situation for our county that's been going on a long time and it's been known about for a long time. And it's gotten to the point where sewage is going into the creek and folks living in there have had been removed due to their own health. And, um, and one certain person having been removed several times and totally threatening the neighbors. And then when I hear about dogs in a building that's been locked up and I see the photos from animal control and I, <laughs> I see a skeleton with fur laying on top of it, and then I go to the pound and I see the other dog with no fur on him because of flea infestation, and I count every one of his ribs, and I look at the money this situation has cost this county because it's just kept going. And I'm just thankful nobody has been harmed. People have been arrested, and like sometimes it's in and out, just like that, and they're right back on there. I want to know, with these new ordinances, are we as a county and the people that lead our different areas in this county, which I put against anybody else, they're awesome, are these things going to happen again or are we going to be really sharp on this kind of situation not happening again to where we have dumpsters over there and the trustees get to go clean up this stuff and risk stepping on something or being bit by something? This has been a total cluster, and I, and I say that word lightly, but I mean it, because it is not proven good on us to allow something so obvious to go on in this county for so long, and neighbors call over and over and over, and it still continues to happen. We have wore the health department out with putting it on them, and then back and forth. It's like, do we really know what to do in situations like this? Because they are literally out of control. And they're not 30 days old. So, Miss Deborah, I've had it with this. And this should have never happened, but it has. And but when I when I see an animal at an animal shelter, this the cause and effect of folks that just live in this and that's their business. And a, and a set of bones on the floor of a building. There is, needs to be serious responsibility and accountability for stuff like this. Well, I certainly understand your frustration, and I can't speak to why that case dragged you out. You just inherited it, and I, I appreciate that because you've listened to me, and I thank did. you. And and that case is getting attention in court and being addressed now, okay. right? So we're doing that. These ordinances are not changing, though. I want to stress that to you. We're just making sure that the penalty is moved into each one as state law requires. So you've had these on the books before. They continue to be on the books. We're not at this meeting and at your December 6th meeting. We are not changing the wording and the language outside of putting that penalty in there. But if we have another case, um, I know I've dealt with these many times in the last 25 years that I've I've done local government law. So, you know, I would know how we would proceed with the next one. As far as the animal is concerned, just to point out and clarify, this ordinance can only address misdemeanors. Right. That case you're speaking of is was so wrong that it needed to be a felony. The sheriff's office believed, and they were absolutely right. So. Um, they have taken that by route of felony to court, which is a little different pattern than here, so it's actually going under state statutes um, that that person was charged with. Well, I just want to say, and I want to single out Captain Scott Gaither, because he is like my new cousin, because I have called him all the time. And they have done everything they can to the point of what they can. The Sheriff's Department is overly done their part they have been wonderful that i can't say enough about them yes but um this is a failure and we cannot have yes. this to happen so, again yep 
And one more other question. I will deal with I each know. case as it comes to me. This is going to be my legacy, septic tanks and dogs. Here we go. I want to ask you about noise ordinance. Um, I want to ask about a speedway. Because a speedway, I know the Turners, they are wonderful people. I want them to make millions of dollars because that serves such a great purpose in this county. But there are neighbors in the neighborhood that move there after a speedway. So then like all of a sudden they drop the speedway out of the sky. But I, don't, I need to know the exact ordinance of what that is when it comes to the, the website may say they run three days a week. Whatever it is because I'm here and it's sometimes seven days a week. Um, I just need to know what the rules are so the neighbors can know what the rules are so they can accept it or maybe they can move because that speedway's been there. It's kind of got first dibs, so to speak. But I just hope this neighborhood can work together because all of them deserve what it is they're kind of there for. And that's just balance. And um, I mean, I get several phone calls a day. It's, it's got to be tough to live by that all the time. If there's a funeral, if there's a wedding or, or anything, there's a sick person in the neighborhood. Speedway, like I said, is not new. And I, the Turners are wonderful people. But I just need to know what the rules are for this Speedway so the folks that live there can know what the rules are for the Speedway so they can either accept it and work with it or they can decide to move because I think that's a fair question for the neighbors. That's all I'm asking. <laughs> that's all. I'll be happy to work with you on that. <laughs> if, In if your I'm spare I'm time. <laughs> if I'm right. Now this particular motion or this issue has and I, as much sympathy as I have for all the I issues. I don't need no sympathy. I, don't think I just have need any, answers. No, not you, the issue. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but it has nothing to do. We're simply trying to be in compliance with North Carolina General Statute 153A 123. Is that correct? That is correct. And that's the only thing this does. All it does is insert as provided by, <clears throat> as provided by North Carolina General Statute 14 4. That's the only change. But Ms. Um, Thompson, I'm in total Thank you, because I'm putting people on notice. Yeah. This cannot happen again. But it has nothing to do with this issue. So no, I'll, it has I'll, nothing I'll to do with our fantastic lawyer to the left. Any further discussion? Uh, real quick, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Ms. Bechtel, I just want to be clear that the we're not changing the penalties for ordinance violations, right? Correct. Also correct. We're just referencing the statute where you can find what the penalties are. And we're putting the language that we're required to by the statute within each particular ordinance. Right. Yes. Thank you. Thank you for your clarification. All in favor signify by saying aye. Uh, aye. aye. Do we have a motion and second? Oh, that's a good thing. That's yeah. a great thing. Do we have a motion? <laughs> I'll make Excuse a motion. me. I'll make all. Oh, Mr. Carter had made the motion. Oh, that's right. Oh, okay. You second it because I I'll wait until discussion. You told me to. Excellent. Thank you. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 It's unanimous. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Oh, um, Ms. Evans. Good evening, Commissioners. Before you tonight is our annual request to file an application with the North Carolina Department of Public Instruction in the amount of $1,459.68. Um, I'll draw your attention back to this was per a uh, memorandum of understanding that we have with the Board of Education. Now, for clarification, the documentation says $1,459,000. Okay, I think you misspoke. I'm sorry. One million four hundred fifty-nine thousand sixty-eight dollars. Thank you. Mm -hmm. For annual debt service, um, this is a, per our agreement with the board of Ed, board of education that was approved uh, back on August the twenty. I'm sorry, August nineteenth to twenty thousand nineteen. Um, so this will be for debt service per our capital plan. Does this go to CTEC? Isn't that kind of help and pay C Tech. Do you know what's how much more is left on that? So I don't know the balance right off. I've got it, um, but I can let Not you like know years. what the balance is. What we did is when the when C Tech was first um, being constructed, <laughs> there was a MOU that the county would pr provide $130,000 each year, and then we would also draw down from the lottery fund mm -hmm. for debt service payment. Once we adopted our capital plan and talking with the Board of Education and the school system staff, 
what we ended up doing was having a different kind of plan for these funds and that was to pull down 1.4 million dollars each year that would go toward the debt service and that would encompass all of the debt service um, the debt service for the school system of course is greater than the 1.4 million dollars but this was a guaranteed 1.4 that was incorporated in the capital plan that we were able to use to work to get the tax rate where it is for the bond sale well, that really makes a difference mm -hmm. when they could use that for something else but that's better <laughs> and i will say that this does not pull that balance down to zero yeah. each year there is still funding there that should the school system come up with a capital need that lottery funds are needed we would full, fill out the application and submit that to the state for approval Thank you, and that would acquire also both boards approving that as well are there any other questions? I already made a motion. All right. Was there a second? Not yet. I'll second the motion. <laughs> All right. Any other discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Right. Thank did you. everyone vote? I did. All right. She now Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Mr. Hager. Thank you. Well, good evening, commissioners. I have an item on the agenda for your consideration. Uh, possibility of um, allocating ARC funding for the Diversion Center for Mental Health uh, Crisis and Diversion. I'm going to go over a little bit of information about uh, the Diversion Center, kind of take you back in time and talk a little bit and then uh, talk about uh, how those dollars might be spent. I will uh, let you know that we have Linda Allison joining us by Zoom. Linda's with the uh, Sheriff's Office and has been involved in uh, the Diversion Center effort for quite some time, since its infancy. Been uh, the original Stepping Up initiative, I believe, Linda was a part of this. So uh, if we have questions about the, the Diversion Center particulars, I'm sure Linda can jump in and help us. So no further ado. Might have to get Bruce to advance, if you would. <laughs> Maybe a little more ado. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> so uh, mental health crisis services have been important in Alamance County for quite some time. Uh, many years ago, before the county began administering its own maintenance of effort funding, the community chose uh, to direct Cardinal Innovations to spend those MOE monies on crisis and diversion services in Alamance County. So that's been going on for quite some time. It's not new. Uh, the county has a contract at this time with RHA, that's our, uh, our vendor, that's currently providing crisis and diversion services on behalf of the county. Uh, and they're currently using a leased facility o over on Anne Elizabeth Drive near Holly Hill Mall, uh, down at the end of uh, Anne Elizabeth Drive. So we've worked hard uh, with RHA and Cardinal, now VIA, uh, and the Sheriff's Office to, to, to take the hours of access for the current uh, diversion center on Anne Elizabeth Drive to high, uh, longer days. So we've gone from uh, time periods of Monday through Friday where you could go uh, access care and crisis services from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. Monday through Friday to now we've been able to extend that uh, through some help with our LME MCOs billing to seven days a week. So right now services are available at RHA on Anne Elizabeth Drive seven days a week, 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. Uh, the Sheriff's Department staff, Gary and Linda, worked very hard uh, on a grant from the Bureau of Justice Assistance. Well, I believe that grant was about $750,000, and it was for three years, and it was to provide funding to pay RHA to be able to take those hours further out. And uh, I have that soon, hopefully in December, January, the hours at the current Diversion Center uh, will go from 8 a.m. I have 10 p.m. Linda, are you are you with us? I think Gary told me I might have that wrong. It might be 8 a.m. to midnight with the new BJA grant. <coughs> Linda, you have to unmute yourself. Oh, sorry. Yeah, that's right, Brian. It would be from um, 8 p.m. to midnight. So, yeah, excuse me, I have a typo on this uh, uh, PowerPoint, but thank you, Linda. Thank you very much. So uh, you can see with the NASA three-year grant, right, so that only provides enough funding to, to, for the next three years to take the uh, services at Anne Elizabeth Drive to seven days a week, 8 a.m. to 12 midnight every day. <coughs> the goal, of course, the long-term goal has been with the Virgin to have it available seven days a week, 24 hours a day, right? So law enforcement, EMS, citizens in crisis, family members can go to uh, uh, the county's uh, provided diversion service seven days a week, 24 hours a day. 
What happens currently if it's after these outside of these hours? I, I wonder, Linda, if you might be able to speak to that maybe a little better than I can. If uh, if a citizen or law enforcement, uh, law enforcement, I would expect is going to ED or detention uh, with the individual, but I'm not sure about uh, uh, in citizens. Sure, if they are seeing someone and um, that person cannot be stabilized and or they should come after 8 p.m. when RHA is closed, they will transport them to the emergency department. As in the case, it's mostly Alamance Regional. Occasionally, Devin will transport someone to um, Hillsborough the Hospital there, but yes, you are correct. Um, they would typically go to the emergency room after hours. Thank you, thank you. So you can see the value in having it uh, the service available seven days a week, 24 hours a day. Uh, the hopes of folks are getting proper, adequate mental health care as opposed to going to the emergency department or perhaps winding up in detention when they could be better served at the uh, the diversion center. And Mr. Hager, let's, Mr. Sheriff, you know, if it's outside of those hours and they're in your custody or a municipality or whatever, what happens at that point? Our officers have to sit with them until they are seen mm -hmm. and sometimes it's 24 hours so an officer could be tied up for up to 24 Absolutely. hours with that's that scenario an coming off the street all right thank you and that's an excellent point that uh, demonstrates some of the value of the the services being provided on Elizabeth drive because I, I believe right now linda you can confirm that an officer can come to an Elizabeth drive site and drop a, a person off for care relatively quickly is that is that correct Yes, that is relatively quickly. Their turnaround time, because we have security at RHA, they can actually, if the person's under involuntary commitment, for example, they can transfer that custody or the security guard there at RHA would take over so they can really just basically drop him and leave. Great. Yes. Thank you. So, so commissioners, that's the service that exists today, right? Uh, in the next month, maybe two months, the service will go to seven days a week uh, uh, from 8 a.m. to midnight understanding it is just uh, uh, crisis crisis diversion but no long-term care at this at this current facility so so obviously uh, our community has seen an increased uh, need for mental health services we, we yes sir just a quick question um, the security at the RHA is that licensed law enforcement or is that a security guard yes it's, it's, we have to do it yeah, so that's what I was thinking. I wanted to clear that up because she said security and a lot of security guard up off. And I believe those costs uh, for the officer providing that service are covered through the uh, contract that we right. have with RHA. Right. So it is a sheriff's department, uh, is a deputy providing that's that service. That's correct. But if we go to a 24 hours, we're going to have to have another deputy. Mm -hmm. That's correct. Yeah. So uh, we, we've obviously uh, seen the increase in need for mental health crisis services in Alamance County. To, uh, to help divert folks from the emergency department as well as detention and uh, and also to try to continue to address substance abuse needs um, so our community has voiced its desire through uh, efforts like our justice advisory uh, commission that the commissioners have put together that uh, this is the number one um, need that has been expressed by our community expanded mental health crisis and diversion services I know Linda you were a part of that effort I believe the um, sequential intersect mapping that was done countywide where people were invited in to talk about from all walks of life and all areas of Alamance County to talk about what's the what's the biggest mental health uh, service need and you were you were part of that effort yes I was um, actually that was the second time this community has confirmed that um, the diversion center is our number one priority um, in September of 2016 we had a community dialogue with about 75 stakeholders um, from across the community and that was the number one priority in 2016. Um, again, we did a sequential intercept mapping with 24 community leaders and advocates in October of 2019 and um, it came up again as the number one goal for this county was to have a 24-7 diversion center. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Linda. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's obviously been well established that, uh, that our community values this not every community has crisis and diversion in it right I, I, localized in its community for its citizens we thought that was important in alamance county for many years and there's a, a significant interest in expanding those services and the expanded services would be from what we have now to um, outpatient programs 
uh, with inpatient services where you could have behavioral health care available where someone could have a 23 hour period to be at the um, 24 hour facility and be stabilized uh, as well as uh, inpatient to the level of the possibility of beds where people may be able to stay beyond the 23 hours. Those are, those are needs and desires that have been expressed by our, um, our community that there's an interest in having that in Alamance County. Right now, and Linda, you, you'll have to make sure I'm speaking accurately and correctly here. If someone comes to RHA and the, and the closing time has come and they have not been stabilized or found a uh, alternate location, they may find themselves at the hospital. Is that correct? That is correct. Um, and in fact, unfortunately, at this point in time, um, they may have spent hours at RJ, but because we don't have a direct admit protocol between RJ and ARMC Calm Health at this time, they may actually have to go to the emergency room and essentially start over again. So what we have in place right now is good. It is crisis. It is law enforcement drop off. And then RHA is working hard to try to figure out what's the longer term solution because RHA, the building on Anne Elizabeth Drive, is not it. It's not licensed to be that. So they work and work, try to find the longer term solution. If they can't, they'll wind up in the ED uh, to be seen there. So there is a, there is a desire to have uh, a facility that could hold folks for either 23 hours or even longer in beds. Yes, sir. What would be an example of, a, of an alternate long term solution to the, to the hospital that RHA might be able to locate? I think there are some facilities, Linda, that you might be able to speak to uh, that, that would be all that RHA tries to place folks that come to the Anne Elizabeth Drive site. Would that be out of the county? Um, are you saying if someone could not be, I'm sorry, I didn't quite understand the question, they can't be stabilized and they need to go to an inpatient hospital? Yes, I think if, if RHA is working to find appropriate placement for folks that come to the Anne Elizabeth okay. Drive site, what's, a, what's an example of an appropriate placement? Um, Typically, they would probably be sending one, someone to um, Old Vineyard, um, to, to that hospital. Um, possibly, um, they may go to Freedom House Recovery in Chapel Hill or somewhere like that. Um, but um, more times than not, they're going out of county. Um, they, they do have limited, you know, they do have psychiatric beds here at Alamance Regional. But um, many times, they are working with other out-of-county places as well. And uh, do you know, Linda, if uh, does uh, RHA from our diversion center uh, ever send folks to uh, residential treatment? Is that a is that a placement? They do on occasion send them directly to RTSA, and we are working as part of the crisis continuum committee in this county to make that an easier process. Um, right now, um, residential treatment services is not. Um, licensed or is not able to take someone who is suicidal um, based on the um, outlay of the facility so um, it just depends on the individual and and what placement is needed at that time um, but we are working to kind of um, tighten up some of those abilities to be able to refer to to local providers thank you thank you mm -hmm. so so commissioners you can see it's it, it's a good service it's well used, it's, it's important to law enforcement, but it doesn't have that longer term ability to stabilize. Folks uh, that come there may wind up back in the ED or they're being sent out of county perhaps uh, to, if, they're, if they're getting that adequate um, and appropriate care. So we had a vision uh, several years ago, as you know, the county's been working on enhancing this diversion service for quite some time, for a number of years. The original vision was uh, an enhanced uh, mental health crisis and diversion model. Uh, the intent was to pay as we do now. We currently pay for these services uh, with RHA on Anne Elizabeth Drive with about $1 million, a little over a $1 million, like $1,008,000 from our maintenance of effort money. The county is, we've talked about this before, the county is required by law to spend a certain dollar amount, $1,203,000 and some odd dollars every year on mental health services. And this harkens back to when the county was divested of its statutory requirements of providing mental health services and it was uh, privatized LME MCO away from the county uh, we had we were required at that point to say this is the dollar amount we were providing then we have to continue to provide that one million two hundred three thousand and some odd dollars it doesn't change it's budgeted every year in our budget in our general fund we have chosen for many years to use the vast majority of it a little over a million to pay for the current diversion services that we offer uh, with RHA on Analyst with Drive. So one of, the, one of the key pieces as we looked at enhancing uh, 
the the crisis and diversion model was try to keep that one million dollar um, dollar amount the same right this was before ARP this was before any of these kind of outside funds were coming in it was let's try to hold that dollar amount to the same what could we do uh, then the, the sheriff's office staff Linda and Gary worked very hard and got that BJA grant for about two hundred forty thousand dollars a year that's going to take those hours to um, uh, midnight uh, seven days a week and Saturday and Sunday also so that was factored into oh that that's a that's an advance right that's taking it even later um, the idea was still even in this original model to try to go to 24 hour service but work with Cardinal at the time to, to Cardinal has uh, did do a good job uh, before they have merged with via to work with RHA to find new ways to build so they RHA could try to find its own revenue right to, to, to make this sustainable and the plan at the time was to make use of the elderly services building that's county owned it's over beside the Family Justice Center act as former headquarters uh, I think for, um, Friendship Adult Day is still in that building. Uh, the idea was to renovate it. Ca Cardinal also gave the county a $1.2 million capital donation one time. Uh, so here's $1.2 million, put it toward the capital need for a diversion center, which we still have those funds in the bank. And then we also, uh, you remember Mr. Petrie? Mr. Petrie uh, donated, I believe it was $3 million for the new building over behind um, the Human Service Center that's gonna house Open Door Clinic. Family abuse services and some supervised visitation from DM DSS. When Mr. Peacher made that donation, he said, it, and part of his gift was also to say, whatever is left at the end, if there is funds left after the three million dollar donation, you can put it towards the building for uh, diversion. We estimate that's going to be about one hundred twenty-five thousand dollars. So, uh, some of Mr. Petrie's funds were being considered for this original uh, enhanced diversion model. If you go to the next slide, Bruce, please. So. There were some, some limitations to the original model. The original model that we were looking at was gonna have a tw the 23 hour chairs. It was gonna be able to do that. That's more than we can do now, right? Folks can stay in this center for up to 23 hours. That gets more time to try to find appropriate placement, but it was not uh, inpatient beds. 23 hour chairs. Uh, as we did have uh, worked with RHA and architects to look at the elderly services building, the building was determined to be really too small to put all the services in there that need to be in the enhanced uh, mental health uh, crisis and diversion center and and the capital funding that is available at that time just uh, cardinal funding and the petri money uh, we, we figured that was enough to renovate Edley services Edley services is actually one of our poorer buildings i think it uh, is graded uh, letter d on our grading scale so it's not in great shape we felt like 1.2 million would probably have lifted it up to become a diversion center but it would not have allowed for adding more space onto the building and that lot is actually such that it would be difficult to um to add on to that building yes and additionally because the uh proposed new center that we're talking about uh it would have different sections would be isolated some from the other and would provide security for victims and for all kinds of other issues that that center over on Martin Street would not have provided for. Is that correct? Yes, sir. that is correct. So after this programmatic review of elderly services, it was found to just not be the ideal spot. And that also led to discussions. Once once elderly services is starting to uh, have like a fall from grace as the possible diversion center, um, it, there was discussion about it might be beneficial to have the diversion center in close proximity to ARMC right and uh, we've since had some discussions about that and there and there does appear to be value to having the mental health diversion center um, it currently is on Anne Elizabeth Drive close to uh, uh, Holly Hill Mall but uh, there would be some benefit we believe in having the um, the uh, diversion center as close to ARMC as possible in that uh, if you've got law enforcement and EMS in particular bringing folks they're oftentimes trained to go to the hospital that's a natural route um, as well as the citizenry if they're experiencing mental health crisis many folks are in their minds to go to the ED right so some real value in considering uh, a site in close proximity to ARMC so those are some of the limitations for our original model so since then uh, all these things have been pointed out and ARP has come right ARP money has has come from the from the federal government uh, the elderly services building was determined to not be quite as good and 
there really is a desire from the community to do more than the 23 hour chairs and there may be potential here to do that so we've looked at a preliminary plan about uh, what a new enhanced diversion model may look like this would be uh, outpatient programs with expanded hours inpatient services that include uh, the 23 hour chairs as well as a number of beds where people could actually stay in the building for multiple days stabilized and begin treatment we've suggested to the commissioners to consider uh, uh, 13.2 million dollars in american rescue plan funds for this project for the comprehensive program because this this is a significant significant expansion of the program cost too right because all of a sudden it's gone 24 hours people are staying in beds in this building it's a more involved and intricate model than uh, our current or even the original enhanced um, of that 13.2 million and these are conceptual budget numbers commissioners please note that do note that these numbers are not coming from a hard and fast uh, proposal or any firm quotes this is kind of budgetary concept numbers uh, of that 13.2 million we feel like uh, after discussing this particularly with RHA there's obviously going to be an increase in the operating costs operations being staffing levels staffing expertise nurses psychiatrists those those costs of approximately two million dollars a year above what we currently pay using our MOE money and our BJA money right so got our million dollar MOE uh, of the BJA money escapes me about 240,000 I believe so what we're saying is that we believe it could cost as much as another two million a year to run the new facility and then uh, we have just estimated approximately 9.2 million dollars uh, if the county was going to build or purchase a, uh, a new building for this um, that's uh, based on some discussions that we've had with RHA and developer and uh, it's also it may be fair thinking about the Petrie building considering the Petrie building is about 12,000 square feet and cost close to three million dollars and it's not probably quite as medical as this but it is a medical facility we do have the open door clinic one in there so it's not a complete removal but those are kind of the thoughts about how we got these figures right so uh, approximately 13.2 million dollars is we feel like reasonable for the commissioners to consider to um, allocate from ARC for the, uh, an enhanced mental health crisis and diversion program and facility we still have our 1.2 million dollars from Cardinal that is still in the bank uh, we have two hundred sixty one thousand dollars in maintenance of effort money that has not been spent that we have banked uh, this could have been we, we pay a um, position out of this at the health department we had some lap salary and we had some years where we did not contract with specific groups we have to spend that money on mental health services so it doesn't just get rolled into general fund it is tracked and designated and must be spent seems like a good use would be to put it toward this building and then we have the petrie uh, startup costs um, one thing to note in this model uh, or any new enhanced model of diversion services at some point arp will go away and we'll be we're, we're looking at how can we use arp to cover these increased um, programmatic costs the programmatic costs will still be there you know, if the county leases the building the lease would still be there if the county builds the building you may be able to you know cover that cost somehow with art but that that ongoing cost is going to be there so just an estimate would be we should probably be thinking about how do you replace a two million dollar ARP um, disappearance right at the end of three years and again I, I, I just can't stress the commissioners enough these are conceptual figures uh, we, we are not at a point where we have concrete proposals with hard and fast um, uh, dollars so some thoughts about the ARP funding some things that the commissioners and staff would need to think about if we if we do if the board does decide to allocate ARP funds and and try to use them for this for this project and this these programs in the facility uh, we're under interim final rules we still do not have the final the final guidance from the uh, feds so some of this may change right we may wind up having uh, we've talked about I think the Senate had approved a 10 million dollar use of art for county functions that could very well apply to this we have not heard about the house um, so there and, and there are some there are some changes that could happen and we would have to work as staff to make sure if we do budget art for this that the, however it is spent it meets the terms from US Treasury so while you may allocate some amount whether that's 13.2 million or another amount I, I would want to make sure it's clear to the commissioners I can't stand here right now and guarantee you we can spend that entire amount 
from ARP on this project. We would work very hard to maximize whatever ARP dollars you put toward diversion. But, you know, guidance, I think uh, Andrew would attest, guidance, uh, the, the legislation doesn't change, but the guidance and instructions and interpretations that we get from the folks that are helping us, NC Pro, School of Government, it does change, right? So, you know, we know this is support of the community. If the commissioners agree that this is an important uh, uh, priority and want to allocate funds, we're going to have to work very hard, and we will, to make sure we spend them um, appropriately. Also, with the, using ARP funding on this project, uh, we would be under federal treasury type rules for how we spend money, so we would be very conscious of requirements for competitive bids uh, for programs and services. Uh, th that's something that we would have to demonstrate to the feds when we're audited, right, that we met those terms. That could be, you know, we've talked a lot about is that sole source, does sole source cover that? Possibly, but when it comes to upfitting, acquiring the uh, beds and comp uh, all the equipment that would need to go into it, we would want to stay on top of uh, uh, and making sure that we're staying compliant with federal purchasing laws. Is that anything to add to that? Is that pretty accurate? That's correct. Okay. Great. So, um, I, Linda, you're still with us. Do you have anything you'd like to add at this point? Because I think I'm, I'm at a point where uh, I've presented the commissioners the possibility of allocating these funds and some information about where we are with the current efforts. I think you covered it well, Brian. Um, again, this has been a priority for this community for a long time. And while the magnitude of it has changed in the last few months um, based on the funding that's become available, um, I think it gives us lots, it, lots more better opportunities than we had um, previously planned for um, if, if we could utilize this funding while it's available to get the center that we need to have. Thank you. Thank you, Linda. I, I think I, I hope the commissioners will take away one. We offer a level of service now and uh, it is helpful to our citizens. But there's a desire from our community. We have heard loud and clear to take that to new levels. And uh, while we have investigated how to do that up till this point, I think the ARP dollars have made it possible to talk about this beds, longer stays, facilities built with potential medical type treatment aspects to it too so um, at this point we'll certainly try to answer questions from commissioners and uh, provide you info there was a <clears throat> there was a question raised today about the stepping up initiative and I spoke to Ms. Evans about that earlier I wasn't able to catch you so <laughs> you've been running all day long too but uh, those funds from what I understand have been depleted that grant has been spent um, do we have any insight into how much I don't remember exactly how much we originally got I think we got that before I came on the board so I know Linda was Linda was key to achieving those grants I think one was a around two hundred fifty thousand dollars Linda that was used for mental health training for our police officers yes. the original grant was two hundred fifty thousand dollars and that was received in October of 2016 the sheriff actually brought Gary and I on board um, in May of that year prior to a grant um, we share a position, it's one full-time position, but um, that grant that we received in October 2020 was, excuse me, October 2016 was for three years. Um, we received a one-year no-cost extension, so it actually went into um, 2020. But um, that grant was used primarily um, to fund the staffing up positions, and we've been working in the community now for five and a half years. Um, we also, um, out of that grant, piloted um, a pre-child release program. About $38,000 of that was for a 12-month pre-child release pilot. That program is still very successful, up and running well. Um, no longer grant funded, of course, but it, it's going very well, saving us lots of money um, in jail days. Um, and so we also spent um, some of that original stepping up 250000 We backfilled some um, of the officer's time to go to CIT training in the various jurisdictions with an effort on increasing the number of officers in our county who are crisis intervention team trained. And that was certainly a good investment with those funds. But those funds were, um, I think Susan um, Evans could probably speak to, they were um, expended and that grant hopefully has been closed out. And the, the, we have one other grant, the one that we're currently working through now with BJA that uh, is the for the additional hours at the Diversion Center. Is that right, Linda? That's correct. 
That's correct. The prom, that grant is for $746,000 over three years, and a very small piece of that pays for a full-time uh, peer support specialist in our detention center. Um, and she actually came on board in May of this year um, for three years of peer support. But the remainder of those funds, and primarily the majority of the funds, would be spent for this crisis hours expansion that Brian told you about tonight. Um, that's what the, the bulk of the grant goes for. There's a very small piece of it that will be spent for evaluation and the health department is who is our grant evaluator for that. Mr. Haygood, what is your recommendation? So uh, I, I, I would recommend the commissioners consider allocating funding from ARP uh, to, toward this project. Been a lot of work uh, done on this. Um, and uh, if you allocate it, uh, then we'll have some idea of a budget that we might could set. Um, that's that's a I think using ARP dollars to do this project is is the only way it's going to happen. Uh, it will mean uh, that we will have to work very hard to make sure that however we spend it is adequate and appropriate and meets Treasury compliance. And I think it will also mean that we will need to be bringing the board um, concrete. Uh, program and facility information for you to approve right so if we if we start looking at uh, you know the possibility of building purchasing leasing uh, versus each other we need to we, we want to we'd have to come back to the board and make sure the board is comfortable with whatever the arrangement that we come up with is same thing with the programmatic piece we've had we have had discussions about this with RHA and VIA and I will say been very pleased with VIA. They have been extremely supportive. In fact, they really hit the ground running with this project, right? They were they knew this was a long-term need in Alamance County. They're supportive of it, which having the LME MCO uh, on board for that is is key. It must be. In fact, I think to spend ARP funds, we, we have to have LME MCO in our corner uh, helping direct us to make sure um, we meet all the compliant requirements, too. So, And what amount of money are you recommending? Uh, I think the, the the budgetary conceptual numbers that we have now are 13.2 million and uh, that's again uh, you know it could be more than that it could be less than that I don't have anything concrete to give you these are uh, conceptual budgetary figures well would we not be looking at the additional one point almost 1.5 million or 1.4 million between the Petrie money the Cardinal money and the other funds so about 14.5 million dollars total those would all be in the mix and must be spent on diversion so uh well the 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 banked maintenance of effort funds do not necessarily have to be spent on diversion they must be spent on mental health mental services health. but the cardinal funding must be spent on the capital piece of diversion that could be upfit also so you know when you when you develop a new building whether we were to lease it or to buy it there's going to be a significant cost for upfit for all the equipment that goes into it so it could be that uh, as a combination of ARP funds, this is what I do foresee, a combination of ARP funds, the um, cardinal contribution of $1.2 million, the Petrie funding, and the banked MOE funds all coming together to pay for this in the appropriate way. That will be the key. How do we, how do we find the appropriate way to pay for, um, uh, for these services? And remember, commissioners, too, uh, you do have access to funding that it isn't ARP funding. It's now designated funds, right, because we spent the um, – ARP funds yeah, right. and reverted those funds. We're tracking those as designated funds. They are now clear from the ARP restrictions. So I think that was $3.8 million mm -hmm. that could be at play in this if the commissioner so choose. Those dollars, if you spend them or not, is up to the board, of course. But because they're free of all these restrictions, you could spend them how, how you choose. So I think Mr. Carter's question is, is the 13 to including or extra with all these other monies? This would be extra. and. Please note, again, without having a, a concrete proposal uh, or, or the hard numbers, I, I wouldn't be able to tell you if that's exactly enough or too much. You know, I think once we got into hard negotiations with however we choose the method to provide the building, right, that's when we would have a much better idea of 13.2 million enough, not enough, is plus the other funding, the 1.5, it's coming from these other sources. And if we got to a point where this program with, with anticipated use of the ARP funds didn't materialize, we could re-assign those funds to another project, right? Yes. 
Yes. Uh, yes, we yes. would. We just have to alert the feds as to what we intend to spend it on. Well, I think I'd, I'd have to ask uh, Andrew to comment on that. If we have to, we have to let them know at this point, or is that just an audit at the end of the process? January 31st is our next reporting deadline, and we would be reporting what we have expended. I don't know that we report what is budgeted. However, eventually there will be a document that outlines the overarching strategies that this board chooses to spend our funds on. That report will go to the U.S. Treasury. They haven't given us a format yet, so there's right. some time there. So How let me say, the, oh, I'm sorry. So sorry. How much of the, of, of the 16 that we've gotten this year, 16 and some change, mm -hmm. how much of that has already been designated? So we, uh, let me get my, my part info out. So we received a total of, oh, well, we have been allocated a total of 32, uh, 925, 136. The commissioners have approved to spend one million twenty five thousand seven hundred sixty four dollars for um, uh, a couple of mental health agencies <laughs> equipment and three new positions and then the commissioners also voted to spend three point three million eight forty two nine eighty one that was to cover those recoverable costs from march to june of this year which are still outstanding and we can spend later yes sir. Mm -hmm. those right. funds those funds are designated the commissioners also approved uh, a little over one point seven million dollars for the h uh, VAC work over at Human Service Center. So, right now, remaining ARP funds, true ARP funds, twenty-six million three hundred forty-four thousand forty-one dollars. Or, if you wanted to include those designated funds that we we supplanted, thirty million one hundred eighty-seven thousand and twenty-two dollars. That's the, including the three point eight. That that is yes, sir. The the thirty million one eighty-seven twenty-two is including the three point eight back into the back yes, into sir. the mix. Thank you. I'm not sure I understand clearly. 13.2 is what you're asking that we set aside at this point. The Petri money, the 1.2 million uh, of the Cardinal money and all, is that, can that be used as part of that 13.2? It, it, the commissioners can determine any amount of ARP money. So we uh, can actually, instead of actually spending the 13-2 of ARP money, we can use some of those other funds as part of that 13-2. I, I, would, I would tell the commissioners we must use those other funds. With the exception of the banked MOE monies, the, the, the Petrie money and the, um, uh, the funding from Cardinal must be used on this project. So uh, if, if you add it to the 13.2, that, that is awesome. That's great. It, it, you know, without having the concrete model here to tell you what it will really cost, it's hard, it's hard for me to say because there's a there are many iterations of how you provide the building and the service, right? Particularly the building. Is it is it bought? Is it leased? Is it leased to own? Are you paying for it outright? Are you buying land? Are you using somebody's land? I don't have those answers tonight. I have what we are estimating it would cost to build a building and at least two years of estimated increased costs for the operation because that will happen too once you open it up and you go to six. We're going from where we are now, which is you can't stay past uh, midnight or 8 o'clock, to now you're staying in a bed for, for days, perhaps. That's a much higher level of care. Now, we, we certainly hope also to be able to work with VIA and other community partners to help pay some of these costs. Uh, I can't tell you at this point what those dollars would look like, but you know, uh, VIA has been great to work with, very interested in being a part of this. We would hope that they would be able to work to make this sustainable so at the end of ARP, the county's not necessarily looking at a $2 million new cost to keep this going. That VIA has somehow helped us figure out how do you bill appropriately for this? Where are other funding streams? Are there any other partners in the community that can kick in and help uh, help get this, this uh, diversion center over the top? I guess what I would say to the commissioners is I certainly recommend uh, the commissioners considering the use of ARP funds for this diversion center. There is no doubt in my mind that there is a, a once in a lifetime opportunity right now with these dollars that have come to use them for this service. I, I, again, there's restrictions and, and guidance that we have to meet to do it. But I, I mean, I've heard it for five years as manager that mental health crisis diversion uh, is, a, is a priority in this community. So we've got a great opportunity. I would definitely recommend using the ARP funds to do it, whether it's 13.2 or some other dollar amount, that, that is completely up to the board. Now, RHA also may contribute along with VIA part of that two million dollar cost per year is that correct i think uh so rha is our contractor they're our vendor currently right so uh you know 
I don't know how much they would be able to work. They would be, they could be the group providing the service long term, right? So they would be billing us for this service. They would be who we would be paying. But I do think Via uh, and uh, potentially Cone could also be a partner here. So having having those groups together, in particular Via, uh, talking with us about how to make this sustainable would be would be very good. That that's how this must happen. Would RHA contract with Via then, or? So it's uh, RHA currently contracts with us. Uh, I think one thing I've heard from the commissioners, just uh, I think I've understood this to be correct, is that the, the, the commissioners seem to be interested in the county maintaining control of the building, right? That, that, in, that in the event that RHA, uh, our vendor, we don't we you know we we use them as a private provider. If we become dissatisfied with their service, or they go out of business, or they change their line of what they do, the county controls the building. We would be looking for another vendor probably through putting out some kind of an RFP or, or right. something like that. Um, let me let me interject there. I think we stated this previously in, in prior meetings. If the county owns the facility, the building, and or leases it with an option to purchase at a set price, then regardless of what happens with the hospital or with RHA or anybody else, we still control that. And if Cone merges with some other entity, we're not adversely affected. If RHA merges or goes away or doesn't complete their the terms of their contract, we still control it and we can change the contract. Short of another 1849 split, I think we're probably <laughs> the most uh, dependable uh, and consistent group in the in the mix. Although, uh, you know, we've, we've had good success with these partners up till this point, but uh, I, I, I would tend to agree that is, uh, more, I think the ideal arrangement where the county is maintaining control of the building, whether it's the county leasing, leasing to own, or constructing and owning outright, always able. That I think that does put county government, county commissioners in the position to be able to ensure, uh, through people like Linda and Gary and Ashley over at the health department, that the that's the other piece of this that it is effective. It's making an impact. Somebody that can. Um, monitor that for the Board of Commissioners and come back and say you spent these art funds well it's making a difference visits to the ED by people with psychiatric problems have gone down this is this is demonstrable tangible uh, proof that this is working and helping people in the community so well, the, I think then we are we're basically looking at a, at a potential budget if you include all the different sources of 14 and a half million 14.6 million roughly uh, if the commissioners go forward with uh, allocating ARP funds to the $13.2 million dollar amount. And but how do we enter into a contractual arrangement until we know that we can spend the ARP funding that way? So that, that would be one thing we're listening for tonight is, is this a priority from the commissioners? Is it something you want to spend ARP dollars on? Uh, whether you budget that tonight or not, if, if we hear that, we are going to begin we need to begin discussions about what the facility looks like, what's the plan for providing the facility, so we can share that with you and with the public, so everybody can hear the hard numbers and the plan, because what the, how that's put together is gonna help direct Andrea and Mimi and her team looking at, are we spending this in an eligible way? So, you know, that is a key piece, uh, but I think the comforting fact that commissioners can take is, it, you know, even if you vote tonight to allocate 13.2 million along with the 1.5, we're going to be back. We're always coming back here to this to this board with, if we've if we've come across a contract, if we found a, a model that we really work and we have the hard numbers, we're going to be back here before deals are signed or things are closed. So it's always coming back to the commissioners for a blessing, a review, an approval. Let's be more informative than we have been. Certainly. Um, you folks have already put together a plan. You've designed a facility. Uh, this thing can work, and it can work relatively soon and save many, many lives. Is that correct? Yes, we, we do. We have been, um, and particularly VIA and RHA have worked together to come up with a potential model for how this might work. Um, it's different than the county straight out buying land, building the building. Uh, but it is uh, possible to do, could possibly be uh, open, we're hearing by um, this time next year perhaps. So that is a possibility. 
but it would certainly take ARP dollars to, to do that. And Mr. Sheriff, I assume this would save you and your department how many thousand? There's no way to determine how many thousands of dollars. It would certainly say that, that you're looking at probably uh, now eighty to eighty-five dollars a day per bed for an inmate. Not to mention the time that where we've had to sit at the hospital for many, many hours. Uh, and so we're talking about potentially sixteen beds in this facility. Yes, sir. That's a large number per day. And you know, more than six medical costs yeah. for someone coming no, 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 no. in our facility it's is yeah. horrendous on some of this stuff that would be controlled in the environment of the emergency. Right, Mr. Carr, just correct me. It's 26 beds, not 16. I think 20. I think 10 of them are like for less than 24 hours, mm -hmm. and then 16 are for um, multiple days. I can't remember it. Seven days, I think it was, or something of that nature. So a lot of work has already gone into this is the point I'm trying to Certainly. draw home. Mr. Chairman, I have a few questions if I might. Please. Mr. Haggett, um, we're talking about ARP guidance. Uh, what, is, what is our understanding of the current ARP guidance regarding capital expenditures for health care facilities? I've got to ask uh, Andrew if she could speak to that. I know they're uh, staying on top of the latest and greatest from ARP. So, so the ARP guidance, like you said earlier, the law hasn't changed. The um, guidance that affects the funds that you control, the Alamance County allocation, is uh, subchapter M, and within that, it talks about very specific um, buckets, I guess, of, of spending categories, and we believe that the Diversion Center project would fall under the category of helping those who have been negatively impacted by the pandemic. If the program is an eligible cost under that category, and we believe it would be, then the um, capital expenditures or leases, uh, anything to do with providing a facility for that program could be eligible. But the wording is very specific. It talks about um, enhancement or, let me look at the word, it doesn't talk about an outright purchase. It talks more about uh, very specific enhancement to health care capacity. So because of their wording, we're not sure that we could spend 100% ARP funding for capital purchases. However, it seems very likely that with these other sources of funding or any partners funding, that there might be an opportunity to use ARP for capital. Well, it seems that we're, I mean, we can parse out that definition, but we are enhancing health care capacity for those affected by COVID. Mental health patients certainly are. A um, couple more questions. Uh, well, you mentioned that it makes sense to use ARPA funds to, it's really the only way to, to do it. Um, to me, it makes sense to be able to front load that as much as possible so that you're spending as many ARP dollars as you have access to early in the process. Um, but let's talk about the conceptual dollars that we talked about—the 9.2 and the uh, and the two million per year. The 9.2 it is conceptual, but it's based on uh, a particular project at a particular piece of land with a particular group. Um, and as I understand it, that it's not an outright purchase of that of that property, right? It's That's a, correct. It's a lease that would be for a term of years, five to seven. And then we don't know what the purchase price would be at the end of that time. Is that right? That's correct. Now, I, I talked to the developer th today and uh, suggested that it, we would have to have a fixed amount in the contract or the board likely, and I'm only one of five votes, uh, would likely not approve the project. Uh, so I would hope that if we entered into an agreement, there would be a fixed purchase price on the front end of the contract. Which we don't know what that is. That's correct. I think we do. How much? It's 9.2. So you've already got a building. Where is that building located? I'm asking. There is no I building. Don't know. There I is don't. there is no building yet. So um, where did 9.2 come from? We are well. I, in fact, I've asked the contractor. Could I use his name? Who's the so contractor? Yeah. That's what I'm getting ready to tell you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. <laughs> I got to have a break here to do that. I, I do uh, appreciate it. Chad Coe, Chad Porterfield is the uh, the developer. 
Uh, he has already started the footings on the project. And Mr. Turner and I rode out there today, saw bulldozer and, uh, and, and equipment on the site. Um, and so uh, and that's the, uh, the developer that um, all these other folks that we've been mentioning off and on throughout this, this presentation have been dealing with. So, um, you know, VIA has been working with them, HRA uh, or RHA has been working with them. The uh, conceptual design is to a large degree with the exterior of the building complete. Was the conceptual uh, the design, design done by us, or was it done by the, the builder? It was done by a combination of uh, VIA, which... Uh, so VIA did have some... They did. Uh, RHA was a part of that design. Uh, the Sheriff's Department was, was consulted. Uh, the Excellent. County Administration was consulted, and they've been heavily involved in that design. Um, so I think all the Excellent. players are heavily invested. Um, you know, Mr. Turner is on the Cardinal Board. Ms. Thompson has been heavily involved in this project and has done a lot of work in this area. Uh, I have, as having previously been involved as uh, Mental Health Board and uh, Chairman of that Board and, uh, and so forth. So I think there have been a lot of players that have been involved in this. Um, and Mr. Porterfield has authorized me to release uh, his name and that would be, and this property, uh, if in fact we are smart enough to approve it and this expenditure uh, would be adjacent to the hospital. Uh, my personal opinion is that uh, this developer is giving us a tremendous discount. Uh, that property's worth, in my personal opinion, and I am not a realtor and I am not an appraiser, but substantially more than the 9.2 asking price. Um, That's a high rent district. It is. Yeah. Uh, but the good thing is, it's adjacent to the hospital. Uh, when we, uh, are, when I'm talking to some of the Coon folks, they uh, are talking about possibly even having an entrance from this site into directly into the hospital, which would save uh, law enforcement. Um, it would mean they would not have to go back out on the highway to get to the hospital itself. Uh, this site has so many positives, um, and I don't know if any negatives. Uh, Mr. Sheriff, uh, yes, sir. you've been heavily involved in this. Do you see any negatives with this particular site and or application? Absolutely not. Mr. Mike, continue the. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, that, yes. So, Mr. Traeger, the um, we, we don't have any assigned contract that says what the what the release payments would be, what the purchase price would be, either now or in seven years, and we don't know if that could fluctuate based on the fair market value that exists. No, we have no no contract, no no formalized uh, agreement like that. No. All right. Um, I agree. The property looks great. The developer is great, but but I need to be satisfied that the deal looks great from the county's perspective. Uh, my other question with respect well, to the two point... Let me address that if I, if I can. I apologize to you. Uh, before any plan is approved, this board is going to have to vote on it. Am I correct? Sir. So it won't happen. If we set aside these monies, that doesn't mean the monies are gone. It simply means they are available if, in fact, we this board enters into a contract. So, you know, by setting aside the monies, we've lost nothing, but we make a tremendous potential contract, uh, which would have to come before this board before we spend any monies. And I apologize. Uh, just a couple more follow-ups, Mr. Haygood. With respect to the two point, the two million dollars in operating costs over two years, which equals four million dollars. That's based on operating costs generated by RHA in conjunction with VIA. Yes. Based on what they think with the enhanced operations that this would that this would cost. Above and beyond the county's MOE and the BJA funds that we're currently giving uh, RHA now. But it does not include any consideration of how those numbers might change with Cone as a partner in, in any method, in any way, how they might partner with us in this process. Is That's that right? correct. Yes. And of course, President of ARMC came to the public hearing last week and said he invited us to the table to talk about Cone's involvement in this. We've had meetings with Cone to talk about this, but we're just starting to have those meetings. So. Again, we don't know what the, how that number might shift up or down with Cone's involvement in any way. 
My point is, Mr. Chairman, that you said we don't lose anything if, by allocating this money. There's so many unknowns that still exist. There's the unknowns about guidance. There's the unknowns about how much this is going to per cost for this particular project. Uh, and then there's the unknowns about program fees based on who's going to be involved and when they're going to be involved. I realize this has been a five-year project, and this is a, a, an important part, of, an important uh, issue in this county, Sheriff. I, and I want to get that for you. And I am for diversion, and I am for enhanced diversion. But I am for enhanced diversion after we after we do our due diligence on this process. I don't think we've done it yet, Miss. Um, Ms. Allison mentioned that there are um, lots of opportunities. That's true. I completely agree. But there's also lots of options. There are other there are other um, properties very close to the hospital that are undeveloped and that are available. Amen. There are there are I mean stones throw away from the hospital. Yes. There are properties that are close uh, that are farther away For that are sale. less expensive. Um, I, my 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 issue with this particular proposal is. You said it. You said it, uh, uh, Mr. Haggard. Is that we're these are conceptual numbers. I, I I don't want the conceptual numbers to drive the the actual effort. I want us to do our due diligence and come up with some some viable options and have that drive what it is that we need to allocate, and then determine how we allocate it based on what we can with the guidance that we have, with the partners who come to the table after a significant amount, not a significant amount of time, but a sufficient amount of time to be able to develop something that is that is truly thought out. Um, you know, perhaps Mr. Porterfield can give us a little extra time to look at this, uh, but I want to make sure if we need to spend ARPA funds up front, it may be better to purchase something and build something ourselves rather than be on the hook to to purchase something at the end of seven years when we don't know what that's going to cost, which will leave us with three options. Walk away, continue to rent at whatever we're forced to rent for, or buy it with a, at a number that we don't know what that's going to be. And, and I just think we need to slow down a second and, uh, and take a longer look. I intend to, to vote against this. Proposal. One point that you missed there, though. Mr. Paisley just said that Mr. Porterfield has said that we would have a back-end number in the lease to buy it out. And, and I think we, we follow up I with that. Do it. I wouldn't vote for it without well, that either. And I think we follow up with that and determine right. that and get that in writing. At the same time, we're looking at other properties where that we can develop with other partners, with ourselves, with Mr. Porterfield. Right. Uh, but just, uh, just to take a step back and to make sure we're doing it with proper due diligence. Can I ask a question? Yeah, absolutely. Um, please help me with this. $9.2 million is going to build a building that we don't own that we're going to lease from the guy that we're paying $9.2 million to build it. I think that, that, could be, that could be building a building that you do own. I think that's, from, from our perspective, that's a cost estimate to construct based on input uh, from so these why folks. Why are we constructing it if it's his building? Well, uh, you, you're not, you don't have to do it on their property. As Mr. Um, Turner's talking about, you could pick another place to I'm do it. I'm just talking about this particular situation. Mm, Nobody supports mental health issues like I do. I work with them every day, but I'm going to take this in a different angle because I support diversion. But I want to ask a question. Is this diversion program about say when Jake Harris goes out and answers uh, my husband's going to kill himself I need somebody out here to help me or and that person goes to the diversion center or is this person somebody that's been arrested for snorting bath salts thinking that would help their heroin addiction and they have to be tased four times and arrested and they're taken to the jail they have to spend time coming off all that if they live I mean, is that diversion center for all this stuff, or is it mainly for our detention center, sheriff's department? Like what I've heard from uh, Via and um, from Ashley and the folks at Public Health is that this is important that it be for everybody in the community, however they're suffering mental health crisis or substance abuse. Uh, uh, my understanding is this will uh, also this facility would also have a um, capacity to treat folks with substance abuse okay. issues. So. And that's good. Now. Is Linda Allison and Gary Ander, have their salaries been funded by you or by the grant? Funded by grant. Okay, but didn't she just say those funds are out? No, 
that they're under you? Did she say those funds have gone, they've depleted, and now they're under you because they're housed in the Sheriff's Department Detention Center? I think I led the, what, what you're so basically saying is correct. Uh, okay. So does Linda and Gary move their office into the Diversion Center? Will that job description be in the Diversion Center of what they are right now? We, and I'll say we haven't decided that yet, okay. but if they're still with me, mm -hmm. I would love for them to, to be there. Uh, As a director or staff? <clears throat> well, they're, they're part-time. Okay. Um, I'm not done, just hold on. Okay. I'm about to throw up. Um, <laughs> Now, right now, we have what we have at RHA every near Dunham Sports and all that. That is a very short-term Band-Aid, and it's a, it's, it doesn't work, not like what you're needing it for. Even in a diversion center, if you're talking about extended stay from 7 to 10 days, that is still not going to fix this person. This person is suffering from whatever they're suffering from, this is a population that some people just want to throw away, but that's not going to happen. That could be anybody in our family any day of the week. My concern is, and you know this, Brian, when we went to Orange County to shadow the recovery court, we heard several times in there, basically a multidisciplinary team that goes across all their case management for that. We heard RTSA several times where clients in Orange County were referred to RTSA and they were housed. A while ago, I just heard that they're not licensed for whatever that we're talking about for a diversion center. I've, Freedom House is in Orange County and that's just the roll of the dice to get a bed. We've had several to go to Freedom House, but you can also walk away unless you, you just, it's just not like that. Old Vineyard. What I'm hearing is the diversion center is exactly what it is, it's a diversion center, but it is not going to do residential treatment for this population that is not going to be fixed in a seven to 10 day spree. It's just not, it's going to serve one purpose, a very expensive purpose. I, I know how long this has took and everybody that's been working on this for five years has laid every foundation, nothing has been missed. We're going to the next level now with doing what we've always wanted to do with this. I'm just, I'm just concerned about this population, this person. What is going to happen to them after they, whatever period of time it is for the diversion center? We don't have that. Living free could triple in size and be full. I don't think any of us know the real population of this population until these doors are built. It's like elder abuse. You don't know what's going on until you open those doors and people just flood through them. 13.2 um, could build probably five floors on your jail, I bet. And you could just all be there with a nice little elevator. But um, I want a diversion center, I really do. But I can't, I can't, maybe I'm just stupid. I can't see paying $9.2 million to a dude that's gonna build a building that's his and we're going to lease and pay it by the month also. I need to be a contractor because you want to go into business? Me and you, you do all the numbers. Say that. Um, I'll just decorate it. Um, I'm not against this. Lord knows I have preached this and preached this, but I am really nervous about this kind of money for a temporary situation because we don't have anywhere except for one living free and then maybe RTSA they can't take all the people that we have that are victims to this and that leaves a group of people that what are we gonna still do with them after seven to ten days we are shipping them out of our own county and it's a real shame that we don't have a facility here in this county that can really get these people through this time this is not a fix no matter how many medications you put on someone, no matter what you do, it is for the rest of their life, case management and supervision and family support, and this is war family out. So um, I'm just, I am all about this population, but we have to think about the next step even further when it comes to where are they going after they've, you know, been miraculously treated for seven to 10 days, because that is just, that's, that's just one of those wish comes true because we this is a lifetime situation with mental health a lot of folks get off their meds because they don't think they need them anymore and that's when you see everybody everywhere 
I'm focusing on the person because I want treatment for the person and it can't be temporary and um, and just be, we keep them out of jail that's great but what is next it's just got to be big it's just got to be bigger than what we're thinking and I don't know if Alamance County can even think about having our own place I mean there was rumors at the Jack meeting a couple of years ago about a psychiatric hospital that was going to be built in between us and Guilford to serve this population. This is serious, real work from broken, just destroyed people for whatever reason. And um, I just don't want us to get in our minds to think, oh, wow, we're going to fix people in a good seven to ten days because we're not. We're going to help and keep them out of jail, which is the last place they need. But they're also arrested, which means they've got to be accountability for their crime they committed. This is not a get out of jail free card either. So I it's just true. nine point, mm, I just, just nine point two million dollars to, that just blows my mind. That really does. So, um, and are we at a, under a time limit to where we've got to agree to some kind of deal with this builder? Because we don't have, this money legitimately yet in stone and i don't want to sign a build me a building but i, I can't pay for it sure. we don't do that and, and i'm not going to put the taxpayer on the line for paying for this money if that doesn't work out this is unbelievably big responsibility and i just want us to do this so right because i think this population deserves right because for so long we just we just haven't and we cannot mess this up we cannot Mr. Haygood, has, have we begun our deadline? I think uh, the individual with Chadco has indicated if, you know, if the county's interested in his model, he'd like to know more about that by the end of this month. But again, uh, you know, there's no requirement to go with any of these specific models. So, you know, if we're interested in the Chadco model, which I think uh, he's in the process of uh, making progress on, he wants to know fairly soon. <laughs> we wouldn't be spending nine point two million dollars to rent the uh, to build a building and then rent it back. That wouldn't be what we'd be spending nine point two million dollars on. But you're saying leasing, mm -hmm. so you're going to pay him that and then lease it from him. No. I think that's that's where that's where I'm we would have to bring we would have to bring the specific terms back to the commissioners about any of these projects, Chadco or anything else. If the commissioners wanted to do diversion some other way, so if we if we go forward with uh, entering into discussions with Chadco, we're going to have to determine that. It, it, this is a lease. How long would that lease be for? Is there going to be a payoff at the end, an option for the county to purchase the building? And then we'll be having to try to figure out what of this, just the facility piece, will ARP funds legitimately pay for? How much, how much of uh, the ARP dollars can you really use without having to worry about coming back at the end and Treasury auditing us and saying this really didn't meet? And I, I suspect that's going to happen at some level and we'll go back and forth with them about it did it didn't we'll be providing documents trying to find precedent going all around the state finding somebody else that did similar that that will happen but anytime you spend these dollars from the feds there is always that chance that you're not you're you thought you were doing it you had all the appropriate approvals and something changes and they come back and say you're going to have to pay for this that is possible um we would certainly put every effort into trying to prevent that brian tell me what 9.2 does what does that do? That is the estimated cost of building a building. So, or it could be put toward a lease if the commissioners wanted to go toward leasing so it's a building. not both? I think it could be either. That's, that's my understanding. You could either build a building or I think with this gentleman, he's interested in leasing it. He doesn't want to. I, I'm, I'm a little reluctant to speak for him, sure. yeah. right? But I think there are there are folks who build these buildings that would want to lease it to the county for specific, or they may have tax advantages that they gain from multi-year leases before they sell it to the to the county. All of that would have to be hammered out in a concrete agreement that would be brought to the commissioners. Say, here's the deal. This we think this is the right one. This particular developer will do it for this amount. But, so you're uh, saying 9.2 would be what we would pay in leasing this building for three years? No. No, leasing or buying. Yes. That's yes. Leasing yeah. or buying. If, you, if the commissioners went the route of an option that involves a lease, it would be advantageous to us to try to put as much of those costs for that lease and 
figure out a way to try to defray the construction costs in the first three years simply because at the end we wouldn't have, we, we would be out of art money and we'd have to buy the building right so if there's a way to figure out how to say we got a we're going to do a five-year lease and those first three years we're going to pour art money into this to through a contractual agreement that specifically says this is the way at the end you would pay this amount to own the building that, that would be my suggestion i've not been involved in those directly but that makes sense to me to say use as much art money on the front end for those first three years and then if at the end you're buying it you've tried to get that down to a lower cost the same thing with the operations while you can't front end the operation cost you've got to work to find a way to keep it sustainable after the art dollars are gone i mean a two million dollar estimate of funding that the county would need to find to keep a uh, multi-bed facility going that's an estimate but it would be more than what we are currently paying wouldn't it a simple way to look at it might be the lease purchase on a car you lease the car for three four or five years and at the end of or two years and whatever the residual balance is at the end of that point in time that's what you pay you usually have to pay right much up front too depending right. on what kind of alternative. right you can structure that lease yeah anyway that's what they're if we're looking at the potential here well, the way i understand what brian's been saying we're looking at the potential back end cost of this deal at about 9.2 million whether we lease it and buy it at the end or whatever but 9.2 as the potential all-in cost of the building at that point in time am i correct uh, again, I, I, I'm reluctant to tell you what the terms would be until we had a we have a, like a contract agreement. Right. Mm -hmm. Maybe we need terms instead of mm -hmm. talking about well, that's what imaginary Mr. builder. Said. We don't know because <laughs> I don't know. I would like to have terms because it's just not well, it's just so, not the five of us. Well, We're signing the whole county up. What for I'm it. thinking out loud is why the hell do I want to give a guy money when I got 3.8 million dollars in my account? I can go buy a damn building. <laughs> You know, I can make this happen myself. I don't have to pay Mr. Porterfield a rate of return on his, on his investment because that's what he's done. He's bought this building. He's bought this land. He owns this property. So, sure, I'll put a building on it and charge you five years. Absolutely. Sign me up. Sign me up. It's a smelly deal. I'm just telling you straight up. That's my personal opinion. I think it's a smelly deal. I just want these folks taken care of but I also want it to be fair to everybody that pays their taxes in this county. And art money is not going to be here forever. And I just, it scares me that we can sign something and we don't know, Lord have mercy, I'm telling y'all, this could just be astronomical what we'll have to pay to care for folks because there's so many. <coughs> I just want it to be fair for everybody, but I want these people taken care of. Absolutely. And you're not asking for us to sign a contract today. No. You're simply asking no. we set aside potential monies to go to this project. That's correct. And that dollar amount that uh, is being suggested to set aside is based on e estimates sure. of the cost. So the commissioners could do, don't have to set aside any ARP dollars tonight, uh, or the commissioners could set aside the 13.2 million or more or less or any combination of that. I think all that is doing from. <coughs> Our perspective is you are you're signaling that this is important. You want to earmark funding for it. It's not these funds are not going to be spent on any other ARP related type activities unless it's proven that it's not needed for this project. That that would be what would happen if you did this this evening. But again, we know we're not asking for any approval of any particular model or project. We do not have um, uh, terms that we could present you that we have negotiated. Because again, what I've heard is the the interest in the county owning or controlling or the or being the lessee so you have control of the building is something the commissioners are interested in so you know th those would be that would mean we would be at the table uh as a team with our county attorney negotiating those those terms of a potential contract or a lease so let me make sure i understand if we vote to set aside the 13.2 million for any project or this project specifically um uh, doesn't mean it's going to be spent and regardless of what happens, it comes back <coughs> to this board before we spend a penny. Yes, sir. That 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 is the the deal. And we have not signed any kind of contract to no. take a shovel and dig some dirt. No. <coughs> if we vote to set aside this money, does that mean that that's what that's for? And it gives this gentleman. I mean, I appreciate anybody that's willing to get involved with this. It gives this gentleman mm -hmm. the inkling that we're we're with you without really knowing all the details. I, I think 
earmarking the dollars and setting them aside uh, takes them off the table for any other projects unless the board takes action to change that. Right? You could do $13.2 million tonight and come right back on November, December 6th and change that and say, well, wait, we want to put it somewhere else. That is always your prerogative as the commissioners well, until we start spending it. Once we get into contracts and things like that, it really needs to stay or some other funding source. Well, we don't to want to leave anybody on to believe in sure. something until it's written stone. Sure. Okay. I think this just puts county management in a position to go out and look at this, negotiating something bring it back and see if it's a deal we want to look at. If we don't, then we can look at something else. Well, I just know we're committed to these people that need to be served, that need to be taken care of. Don't get, we can't get lost up in a building. We've got to make sure we're focusing on the needs of this population and how they can be treated and uh, cared for. Because this, is, this has been forever. This has always been around. And mm. Well, I, th I think it's important, too, to remember this is uh, and for staff to remember this too, this is the first stab at an enhanced model like this to this level, right? We've been doing the level of service provision at Anne Elizabeth Drive for a long time, million dollars a year from statutorily required money, right? Worked very hard to get a little bit more money and take it to a new level. This discussion about 13.2, 9.2, lease, buy, bill, this is the first stab at really taking the diversion center beyond the elderly services model, which was not even as adequate as this, right? That was a good model. It's better than what we're currently doing. It was better. It was going to have more potential. But this is, uh, this is very far above our existing and even our first proposed uh, enhancement. And this is the first stab at it, just having this discussion right now about funding, dollars amount, uh, ARP. So um, that's, that's, it's going to be a little bit difficult to work through, and especially with ARP monies. Uh, lots of people interested in it and our concerns about you know, making sure we apply it appropriately. So. I do have a couple of questions. Uh, I'll wait until the end. Yes. I'll take notes. Uh, it's not going to be that bad. Uh, just want to reiterate, in this facility, there's 26 beds. I'm, I'm not sure off the top of my head how many there oh, are, Mr. Lashley. I'm sorry. I, 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 I've heard various numbers. That's why I wanted to clarify. I had in my head 16, but I could I be I could well. be correct. I could I be incorrect. I heard 26, but I thought I'd ask that. Uh, you mentioned earlier about um, currently we do not have partnerships with Cone or anyone else currently. Other than our contractual arrangement with RHA for the service they're currently providing, but well, we don't um, have Cone Health. No, no, as a partner. No. Okay. All right. Um, the nine, the the thirteen point two. That's nine point two for the building. And you have four million dollars for operating. That's two million for each year. Yes. So you've had you're you're basically putting four million dollars operating in there, which is a very smart. Um, I just want to make sure that this step up program is no longer working any longer. We don't have any grants because I looked at it in the budget. I couldn't find a line item in it. That's why I don't. I know we don't have any money for that particular group currently. Correct? From what I understand, the grants have been fully right. expended. I could, correct, Ms. Evans? Well, I, I looked at it. I looked for it in the budget, and I couldn't find it. That's why I knew it was probably yeah, gone. So, so, Linda, the 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 current grant that's being worked that we had we have had two BJA grants, right? Both of them were Bureau of Justice Assistance. Is that is that right? That's correct. Um, we actually on this latest grant, the one that's current, the seven hundred forty six thousand dollars we were just an applicant we helped write the grant um we have a grant committee a grant writer um but we work under the sheriff we are not funded in this grant um as a stepping up project coordinator gary you or know, i are not funded in this current grant when our previous grant ran out the 2016 grant that ran out in 2020 um our, our minimal salary because the part time was picked up by the sheriff's office, we we are not part of these grants. So, Linda, are you? Um, if, you talk, if you talk about the stepping up program, um, that then yes, you will not find that in the grant or, or anywhere um, set aside itself. This grant actually is for a crisis accounting, mental health crisis um, diversion expansion, and for a peer support specialist in our detention center to um, work with um, individuals when they are being released, either mentally ill individuals 
um, who are repeat offenders, if you will, or those who have substance abuse issues so that we can reduce our jail recidivism. That's what peer support specialist does and that's what's grant what's funded in this current grant. So Linda, you it's it's accurate to say that for stepping up diversion purposes we've had one BJA grant for two hundred fifty thousand dollars that was primarily for crisis intervention training for um, law enforcement. We we have a current BJA grant uh, for roughly seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars that's primarily for three years worth of expanded time open time at the Anne Elizabeth Drive Diversion Center and are those the and then we've had the 1.2 million dollar one-time capital grant which was uh, you could call it a grant from Cardinal Innovations to the county specifically to be used on the Diversion Center building and we still have that in the bank and then we've got the uh, banked MOE funds. They were the unspent monies, $261,000. And then the uh, Mr. Petrie funds that we project are going to be left from the end of that project for about $125,000. Are you aware of it, I, any other grant? I'm not, I'm not aware of any additional funds, Brian, that have ever been appropriated towards this project or any other grant that we have, we have, we have not received any additional grant. What about the opioid monies? So the opioid money, in fact, uh, you know, we've, we've, is eligible, we believe, to be used for um, substance abuse treatment and um, programs like that. So it could be possible to factor it into this. We would want to make sure we were doing that in terms with the settlement and uh, any other restrictions that might come with those funds. And I know uh, Deborah has a, a, a lot of knowledge about those funds and, and potential restrictions for them. So Don't we expect our net on that to be about 351 a year? Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit during an attorney's report about the opioid litigation, but I would say it is premature to count on anything. <laughs> <laughs> the, the only other piece that I, I, I did uh, want to make sure I mentioned to the commissioners that is, it is my understanding that there is an allocation in the state's budget this year in the dollar amount of $500,000 specifically for Diversion Center uh, building for Alamance County. So that, that, uh, is great news I think that was confirmed this evening that it is still in the budget so we can all hope that that comes through and that could be another half a million dollars that could be put toward this program but my understanding is that is capital and facility oriented as opposed to uh, the operating costs so. just for my clarification if we vote <coughs> to set aside the 13.2 million that is not obligating that money to that purpose it will still have to come back before this board as to whether we do or do not spend it. I think it would be budgeting the funds. Is that, am I saying that correct? It would be budgeting the funds this evening and then if a lease agreement or a purchase agreement were uh, negotiated, that would come back to the board for approval before anything would be signed or spent. So we haven't spent any money correct. until we have a contract. Correct. And that contract would have to be reviewed and approved by the board. And then uh, once spending started with that contract, it would come from that budget of funds that you would have put in place. Could, uh, could uh, RHA be consolidated into this? Since the, 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 the do we own that building on Elizabeth? No. Okay. no. And, uh, so we could get them out of the lease. That's if correct. If we put them in. How much do we pay for that building? So our total bill to RHA is a little over a million dollars a and I, a year, yes, sir. Okay. Um, I'm not sure how that breaks down between facility costs off the top of my head versus right. um, the programmatic cost. But I'm, if I'm not mistaken, we have that data. I just don't know it off the no, top no of my head. No worries. That, that's good enough. <clears throat> uh, and that was my next uh, question to Deborah about the opioids. So uh, I'm good for now. I do know that with diversion, it, it's just not you, – you come in there you need to go to diversion like that you have to work collaboratively with probation and the district attorney's office because you said that these folks still have uh, some mm -hmm. have uh, to go to court yeah because <laughs> if they're going to the jail they've got mm -hmm. a court date because they've been arrested for a crime whatever that crime is usually in drugs it's just really heartbreaking so if we vote for this we're setting aside the money, but as early as December the 6th, we could undo it. Is that correct? Indeed. Uh, if, if you budget these funds and, and to change your minds, uh, n nothing will be contracted without the board knowing about it. Contra any, any, whatever that deal may be, whether it's a Chadco deal or any other deal, 
that's going to come back to the commissioners for review and be explained to the commissioners and the public what the terms of the proposed for firm terms are uh, that would come that would come back for approval and then you know we'd follow through on the agreement so it just kind of gives you a framework under which to work for the next couple of weeks <clears throat> actually what three weeks still on the next meeting mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. a couple <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's actually three. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, guys, gals. <laughs> Do we have a motion? I'm going to move that we set aside the 13.2 of via monies and uh, that it be appropriated at least until otherwise decided for this diversion center. <coughs> I'll second it. Have a motion and a second. Comment I would have. I was on the board in 2014. We were talking about a diversion center. We were talking about the lives that would be saved. We talked about so many positives with this diversion center. My question is, while we keep fooling around with this, how many people are going to die? I can answer that. Answer it. John, sir, when I spend thirteen point two million dollars, I like to have a little more, a little more things to go on. Well, we I don't even know where this damn place is. Well, I told he you told me. Yeah. Okay, thirteen point two million dollars. I'm for a diversion clinic. I'm not for because I don't have enough information here to say yes. I say yes for a diversion clinic. Yes, but I don't know enough to tell you yes on thirteen point two million dollars because you know something, John. I can pretty much, and I will do this tomorrow if you want me to. I will go, there's three pieces of property, and I'm a property hound. Like Miss Thompson says, she thinks she's dogs and septic tanks. Well, I've become a real estate agent. I've become a real estate agent, un unannounced to me. There are three pieces of property around the corner from where you're talking about that are for sale. I know the owners. I've actually talked to the owners. Not for a diversion clinic. Just like, why are you selling that building? It's a nice building. What are you selling it for? And he told me why he's selling the building. He's getting old. He wants to get out of the real estate business. He's already, you know, almost 75 years old. He's ready. Wait a minute now. He's ready to Well, he's ready to get out of it. You, you've been <laughs> retired. Nice. He's still he's working. Been he, he's, he's, he wants to retire. So I just know that there are a lot of situations that the county could get themselves in for a diversion clinic that would not cost $13.2 million. That's my only hang up. Uh, I just don't have enough information to hang my hat on. And I really do want to. Um, I'd really like to talk to Mr. Porterfield as the, you know, the guy who's, I think I heard that he's built some buildings around here that we could go take a look at if we wish. Uh, so I'm not, I'm not, I, I like the diversion center, Sheriff. Uh, don't get me wrong, I do. But I believe I can save you a bunch of money by not going this route. I think we can do it cheaper than 13.2. Actually, I'm going to stay off the 13.2 number because I don't like adding my operating cost in my in my building. So I'm just going to say 9.2 mm -hmm. uh, because we will figure out those operating costs through taxes. Well, again, we're not voting on a building no. or on spending no. any money. So I, I just wanted to, to tell you the reason why I I'm going to vote no because I don't have enough information. Right. 13.2 million dollars is a lot of money to me. If it's not to you guys, let me know where your where your bank accounts are. It sounds like I know which way this vote is going, well, but I'll call well, the question. If well, but, is ready. I, I, a couple of comments, Mr. Chairman. I'd like to echo uh, Mr. Lashley's comments and also say that I, based upon the number of variables that exist in this situation, I, I believe the 13.2 million dollars is just not accurate. Up or down, it's just not accurate. Uh, and I think establishing a $13.2 million expectation when it's, I do not believe it's going to be accurate is going to create three things. It's going to create confusion to the public. We're going to say 13.2, everybody's going to write 13.2, and then it's going to be a different number in a certain number of weeks, and everybody's going to say, what happened? What is going on? We don't need confusion that we don't, that, you know, confusion already exists. We don't, shouldn't create it. Second, 
I think it sequesters sequesters money that we could use for other other projects that that we we'd be holding off when we wouldn't have to. Third, respectfully, uh, Steve, I think the setting aside this money actually hurts us with negotiations because it sets an amount that we're prepared to spend. Where if we don't set a amount that we're prepared to spend, I think it gives us more leverage as we negotiate other properties, so or, or any property. So I, I think for those reasons, even setting the $13.2 million expectation is unwise at this point. Well, it's kind of like we've got this money, but we've got this carrot dangling in front of us, and we want this so bad, we'll just take anything. And we just cannot do that because it is not my checking account. Everybody's paying their taxes. Everybody's doing everything. We see everything's going up. And that affects this population when it comes to larcenies and all kinds of stuff. It's all tied in together. So <coughs> there is no doubt that everybody on this commission board is supporting this, this idea of what we need because it's in our face. But there's no doubt that I want to know every flipping detail of every penny because I, if I can get a building on sale, I'm going for that. But I just want it to be the right thing. You don't do mediocre in this kind of work. It's got to be the right way and the right amount and the right time because we're just the building. What works this program and who serves these people, we don't do that. And we have to have the right people once again in line to take care of this population because this is just a tormented group of folks that need 100% of care. And we can, we're not going to forget these people, but we answer to everybody. And we need to make sure we have a balance in the answer that we're given. So. Well, guys, we're beating a dead horse. Let's take a vote. <laughs> Everybody ready for a vote? So all in favor of setting aside the 13.2, say aye. Aye. All against, say nay. Nay. Yeah. All right. It's four to one. Wow. Okay. Next item. Well, Let's commissioners, a, it's still, still me. Uh, commissioners, the next item on your agenda is the consideration of appointing representation to the VIA Regional Board. Uh, as commissioners well know, VIA and Cardinal are merging. These are our two uh, LME MCOs. Cardinal, our old board, uh, our old group. VIA is our new group. And uh, VIA is creating a new board structure to allow for representation by all 31 counties. So VIA has picked up a number of counties around the state. Alamance County is one of those counties. Um, and this new VIA board structure deviates from state statute. Uh, however, the number of counties that VIA will be serving uh, allows the Secretary of the Department of Health and Human Services to approve an alternate board um, composition. So you have in your pack, uh, your packet, a resolution from the VIA County Commissioner Advisory Board where they approved this new uh, board structure for VIA and a letter from uh, Deputy Secretary Dave Richard is in the packet where the Secretary's Office did approve this new proposed board composition from VIA. And you also have a, a regional board plan in your packet that shows the counties, how they break down, which counties are which. In this new structure from VIA, Alamance County would be in Region 4. The counties in our region would include Stokes County, Caswell, Chatham, Person, Franklin, Granville, and Vance. So if you can see, uh, population-wise, Region 4 is the largest. And I know that Alamance County, uh, we may be the second largest county in VIA's new group, second only to Buncom. I think that is correct. Um, so the way this new model will work is each county board of commissioner group uh, in Region 4 will appoint two members to serve uh, as Alamance County's representatives at the Region 4 board level. One of these two uh, members at the region, the VIA Regional Board, must be an Alamance County commissioner, right? So it is required. You have to appoint one Alamance County commissioner. The other appointee can be a county commissioner, the county manager, the DSS director, the public health director, or a law enforcement representative. So what will happen is once this board appoints one of you, at least one of you, to be uh, the representative to the VIA Regional Board and another person, um, the VIA Regional Board will select two representatives to go uh, be on the governing board for VIA, right, the bigger, the larger uh, governing board. 
Uh, at this point, the timing, uh, VIA has encouraged all its member counties to work to get this regional board appointments done this month. So we're, we're right on time in November of 21. And then in December, the regional boards will appoint governing board members. And VIA hopes that um, in January or February of 22, the new VIA governing board, the large board, the overall board will meet. So we're requesting this evening that the commissioners consider approving two members for the VIA Regional Board. And I would suggest to the commissioners that you may want to consider appointing two county commissioners to this board. The reason I suggest that is uh, I think what I've seen with LME MCOs is that they do pay a lot of attention to county commissioners. Right? They listen to county commissioners because you are able to vote to leave them or you hold them ultimately accountable. This is a brand new group and we, I personally have been impressed with VIA. I know several of you have. I would suggest that it will be really important, I think, my humble opinion, to have a representative from Alamance County on the governing board, the bigger, the bigger board, it's considering that we're one of the largest, if not the second largest county in Via's new region. Putting two county commissioners on the Via Regional Board might help make that happen. I don't know that. I can't guarantee that. But what I would say is if you point two county commissioners, myself, uh, Tony and Adrian Day of DSS, we can attend these meetings. In fact, I would want to go. And I, and I would certainly say I'm sure that uh, Tony and Adrian would be interested in going whether we are members or not, because this is a brand new uh, LME MCO for us. And we're interested uh, as just uh, leaders in, in the county government of hearing what's going on. So it's something to consider. You may want to consider appointing two commissioners. Um, and the rest of us attend until you kind of get a feel for it. And maybe you can uh, really whoever the two commissioners are if you go that route i would encourage them to really push to get a commissioner on the bigger board i think that's where a lot of high level mental health service provision decisions are going to be made and i know y'all share the desire to have alamance county adequately represented at that level and when those decisions are being made too so um, bottom line this evening we need two appointees uh, one must be a commissioner uh, one could be another commissioner, manager, DSS director, or public health director, or law enforcement representative. I'll make a motion that we appoint uh, Chairman Paisley and Commissioner Thompson to the uh, VIA board, VIA okay. commissioner's board. Do we have a second? I'll suck it. Well, okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, I thought you could suck it if well, you want. Well, I don't want to second my own name. It's like uh, voting for yourself. Yeah, right? that's okay. Motion. That's okay. You can do that. Uh, <laughs> okay. Any further discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. Uh, aye. Unanimous. Thank you. Hey, Thank Mr. Haygood, is it, uh, I know. So, oh, yeah. Well, I'm sorry. sounds like a crazy question. <laughs> but. Since there's two commissioners going to be in that meeting, I guess, I'd, like, if I wanted to show up in plain clothes, I can't. <laughs> so, if you, I would dress up. Sunglasses, a wig. Hat, glasses, and incognito. Yeah. I wear a mustache, too. So, you, the two commissioners that are on the meet, on the board are participating in the discussions and that voting. Works. You could, the, the rest of you could go as attendees to merely observe and learn well, there's sure zero they're, prohibition they're sure doing their job because oh, you're way. well <laughs> you're you're not all meeting together to make a business sure. decision on behalf of the county and that's why it is perfectly legal for you to attend just as any other well, citizen because i'm like brian i'm, I'm very curious sure. so something so uh new especially to the county we're going to be involved with these folks we need to get to know them. absolutely yes all right we've had a request for a break so we're going to take a 10 minute break all right we're back in session, but I'm glad you gave it to me. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to propose an option for us on this diversion center program. Um, as we've observed, all of our commissioners want to be informed of the discussions on this process, and we want to see what this could look like what the deal could look like. And there are possibly multiple options out there as far as deals are concerned. I would like to encourage, and I don't know if this needs to be an emotion, if it needs to be an emotion on the motion, uh, encourage our county manager to engage in discussions to determine what a deal would look like on the proposed property we've had, and if some other properties can be brought into the discussion, let's look at multiple properties and see what can be done. 
this is too too important a project for us just to walk away from. I know there's a time window on this particular project, and I hate to see us lose it because we didn't enter into the discussions. So uh, that's my motion. No commitments of dollars, no commitments of anything other than to find out what it might cost. Would uh, Mr. Carter consider an amendment to the motion? Sure. Uh, I think that's appropriate. I think everything you said is appropriate. Um, but the, uh, well, I understand it to be that the county manager would would seek out uh, opportunities for development at both this property that we've talked about and additional properties. Correct. Correct. And uh, that he would um, investigate or seek proposals for provisions of services and partnerships with both our RHA and Cone for whatever facility we end up uh, going with. Sure. So that it's a proposal both for facilities and for services. Right. I agree with that. Is that a second panel? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, start. that is a second. Okay. Any further discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 It's unanimous. Good stuff. Ms. Rollins. Good evening, Commissioners. Before you, we have a project that our Central Communications Group has been working on. They've been working on it for quite a while. They have tried. Um, couple of options to fund it but basically the project is to replace the console equipment that they uh, use in our main facility as well as our backup facility uh, for all CECOM, all E911 operators. It is the console equipment and the backup equipment so it's a little bit less than a million dollar project. Uh, the total equipment cost uh, that we have a quote from Motorola, the equipment cost was $998,380. We looked at, we've actually looked, they looked at um, getting this funded by a couple of different grants that were not approved. So we're now um, looking at possibly getting E911 board funding. This is uh, state tax funding that is available for these kind of projects uh, to partially pay for this project. Not all the pieces are eligible, but for what is eligible, we would like E911 funding to pay for it and then we would need to use local dollars for the remainder of the project. When we looked at that, uh, our budget would, couldn't afford it um, out of the current year budget, but we looked at uh, replacing the equipment using a short-term lease, a 59-month lease. Anything that is five years or 500 and $500,000 is uh, subject to LGC approval, but anything less than a five-year or 60 month lease uh, is something that we can do without going through a complicated process. So uh, they've looked at leasing the equipment, which does fit within our budget this year, and we would be able to budget the funds in future. So it will be five equal payments of $217,938.60. So this uh, request before you is approval of the resolution or the, uh, the agreement it's substantially informed. Our attorney is still reviewing and working out some details on the actual agreement with Motorola, but um, to approve that agreement and then also approve an amendment that would amend our E911 fund to use some reserve funds. We've got some fund balance there that we would use $152,557 of their money and then we would reallocate $65,000 $381.60 of uh, local funds from our capital plan. So this project has been in our capital plan. We've been looking for alternative funding, and at this point, uh, we're under time pressure to replace the consoles. They will not be under uh, uh, maintenance agreement after December of this year, so we'd like to go ahead and get that order placed so that we can get them replaced with the current version of what these folks should be using and then put them on a rotating schedule in future for uh, regular replacement. And what's the age on the existing consoles now? Ten years. How old, the, how old are the existing consoles? 2009. Uh, 2009. 12 years. 12 years. Oh my yes. gosh. That's ancient history. <laughs> So it is time to replace the equipment, and uh, the timing of this, if they were uh, to get approval, 
the order could be placed and we would be put into the pipeline because there are delays in delivery for technology. So they're looking for a delivery this fall, I mean this spring. Hopefully all of the, um, the first piece of this would be in place for um, the, the first payment would be this fiscal year. I'll make that motion. Um, I'm sorry, before you do. Don't, don't tell me what to do. Tell me what to do. I mess up. You're not, you're not messing up. I just wanted to add a piece of information and ask you to include it in your, in your motion. So uh, everything Andrea said is correct, but what's unusual, and I'm, I'm meeting with Dexter at 9 o'clock in the morning to go over the few things. It's nothing major in the least that, that would alter uh, the outcome, but they do have a resolution so I would ask that you also include that the chair be authorized to execute the resolution, which just shows you as a board approved it because it is a five, well, 59 month. Um, and so they just need to understand that the government has approved it for that term because of funding reasons, My which is unusual. needs to also say what she said. Thank <laughs> you. And I'm making it. I got a couple right. of questions okay. about the 65K that you mentioned. Well, we needed a second. Uh, before we can full discussion normally. Oh, sorry. <laughs> and I'll second the motion. So. Excellent. Thank now you. Jeff. You're welcome. Now, Mr. Lashley. <laughs> Thank you. Now, what's your question? I guess I got to read uh, Robert's rule of order, don't I? <laughs> okay. Um, go through me again. You said five equal payments of 217. And then you threw in a 59 month lease. Uh, can you just explain that to me? So, a 59 month lease is the term of the agreement. And how much is that lease each month? Is it 65K? It's not, the payment terms are listed as five equal payments. Mm -hmm. So they didn't break it down into monthly. Mm -hmm. That's right. Agreement. Okay, the only reason I ask is you, you <coughs> threw me a curveball when you had the 152 and, and then we have to pay 65. I was assuming that was 65 equal payments. No, sir. <laughs> or I should say five equal payments of 65K. I'll get it right sooner or later. It it would be. It will be. So the first the first year payment is all that needs to be budgeted at this point. Okay. The four payments that would happen in the next four consecutive years would be in the annual budget. Okay, so we're going to put that in our budget going forward. Yes, sir. So for at least five years, or well, four four years. For four more four, years, four years, they would need to be budgeted according to the lease agreement. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Any other discussion? Mm -hmm. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Thank you. Thank you. Again, it was a 5 0 vote. Okay, Ms. Callum. Well, I think y'all have done enough math tonight, so that's not part of my presentation. Um, what, we're gonna, what I'm asking for tonight is to allow us to apply for the Atlanta Mobile Home Grant the Department of Environmental Quality gives. They don't give us a dollar amount. We just ask, and like last year we got fourteen thousand or over fourteen thousand dollars. Years before we've gotten closer to ten. They kind of decide what the number is. So you see the twenty-seven thousand. That is absolute max. Probably won't even come near that. Like I said, we got fourteen last year. That's just to say we know where absolutely the most we will get. So this is due by December first. We need y'all's approval to be able to apply. We've done this. I think since two thousand twelve, Alamance County's been allocated think two years they didn't give that grant so we've been able to get rid of quite a few abandoned mobile homes it's in the county it's in the cities it's literally anything within our borders city limits go away anything is feasible and we keep um, quite a few I think we've got like 10 applica applications on hand right now that we could get approved last year but just didn't quite get in in time to get all of that money and last year's money so we usually keep somebody on hand that needs these monies where do, they, where do you take them? So the guy that handles them, he takes them apart. So he'll recycle the metal. He has to take the light bulbs to a different place. Thermostats go somewhere else. They have to be taken. And then the metal of the actual structure has to come apart too. I mean, they literally take them apart on site and haul off the different pieces. Wow. So there's different contractors do that. And they, I mean, this year they paid 1500 depends on which tier you're in for the state but this year they pay 1500 for a single wide two thousand dollars for a double wide and whatever monies they make off recycling that's them too as part of this and this has been done but 
traditionally we don't charge that landfill dumping fee to them because then that reflects back on us anyway so we kind of excuse that fee to the contractor that handles this for us cool. Sounds great. Yep. see no money okay. no man do we have a motion i'll make a motion to accept the funds i'll second any discussion all in favor signify by saying aye aye, aye. It's unanimous. Thank you. Thank you, Tanya. Madam Clerk, I see we have no additional speakers. Thank you. Uh, commissioner's responses. I assume since there were no speakers, we, there are none. Well, I actually have. I just wanted to. Um, commissioner's comments. What's that again? Commissioner's comments. Yeah, I just want to make a couple comments. I mean, uh, next weekend is Thanksgiving, right? Thank you, sir. I appreciate it. Um, I guess the only comment I wanted to make was um, just to uh, express how much I enjoyed the Veterans Day Parade this past weekend. It was an incredible event. I wish every Alamance County person had been there. It was such a wonderful event with all the kids. And another thing I wanted to say is I wanted to shout out some kudos to my alumni. Williams High School Bulldogs were in our parade Saturday morning after losing to the state second in the state by one point in overtime right and those those men got home in the middle of the night and they showed up at our parade to recognize our veterans and i just wanted to tell the williams high school coaching staff how much i appreciate their guidance of these young men mm -hmm. that's an incredible thing and there were other schools there as well uh, but i just wanted to make those two comments uh, to thank to thank everyone so much for Alamance County giving so much consideration to our veterans and realize what an important part they are to our community. Thank you. Y'all got to enjoy the whole parade. Yeah, it was awesome. John and Craig and I were riding in the back of a truck. So <laughs> <laughs> we, we, we saw the backs of some people and the fronts of some people. But I'd also like to recognize the Sheriff's Department for Operation Bottom to Top. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Where they made was it 50 52 arrests. arrests. Uh, a ton of money was uh, recovered. $3 a lot of drugs were taken off the streets. And I'd like to say thank you to the Sheriff's Department and all the different elements of the Sheriff's Department and other municipalities that worked on that. Yes. See Mr. Parker here, we thank you. And I say also thank you to the Sheriff. Any other comments? Okay, uh, County Attorney. Yes, so first I wanted to let you know, um, finalized the real estate purchase agreement for the First Horizon Bank today. Um, awesome. And Mr. Haygood has signed it, and I have communicated with the attorney that is representing us that it is signed, and so I am, he is awaiting instructions from the bank on how they would like to receive that document. So hopefully that happens tomorrow, but we're moving. We also in. mentioned that uh, a local attorney, Chuck Stebbin, did the title search for us, and I just want to say thanks to him as well. Yeah, that's the attorney I was referring to. Sorry. Thank you. Um, and then the other thing I wanted to talk about was opioid litigation. So you may recall in August you approved a memorandum of understanding related to the allocation of funds in other words if there's a settlement and it comes to North Carolina how those funds are going to be divided between um, the state and local governments and as you probably know there's a 555 committee of which I am a member and the the attorneys on that 55 committee work with the Department of Justice lawyers over the last 18 plus months every Wednesday in a meeting that are still going on that I participate in to get all of those details worked out. Um, and still to date, North Carolina's is absolutely by and far the strongest, best allocation agreement in the entire country because in most uh, of the states that have been announced and the ones that we have we know of that aren't public but are close, um, it's usually 15% that is going to the local governments. And we've completely flipped that. And so now uh, we're getting a lot of inquiry on how we did what we did here in North Carolina. And um, I actually spoke at the International Municipal Lawyers Conference 
in September uh, on that very topic because there was a lot of strong interest on it. So it's great that North Carolina is getting such national public attention in a very positive way. The next step then is the actual settlement agreement. So back in July, you may recall, you would have heard on the national news that there was a settlement uh, from four entities. One is Janssen Pharmaceuticals, which is a manufacturer that is a division of Johnson & Johnson. Uh, the other three are McKesson, Cardinal, and Amerisource Bergen, and those are manufacturers. Excuse me, those are distributors. So what we needed to do then was actually sign the settlement, right, because those entities are a number, but not all of the defendants in the <coughs> national opioid litigation. So there are still some out there, but those are the big ones. They've agreed, yes, we'll settle. So we got those documents. I had Brian sign those today. And when you adopted that MOA back in August, you also adopted the resolution, and I had added language in, and I didn't even know you yet, <laughs> to that resolution that went statewide that would authorize the managers to sign that so we didn't have to keep bringing everything back because, of course, you want the money. Uh, so those will go out tomorrow. The deadline's January 2nd. We're well ahead of, of that schedule. One of you asked, you know, when, when are we getting the money, how much? Part of the settlement relies upon a high enough percentage within a number of states signing up. So anything you can do to get your colleagues across the state, other county commissioners, to make sure they sign the settlement agreement, different from the allocation agreement they already signed, will help all of us. That is also true for cities of 30,000 population or higher. Okay. So that's where we're at. A bulk of that money, assuming, we all know what happens when we assume, but nonetheless I'm going to assume that it's going to happen, it's still going to be a while. It's not like we're going to get that money in February. We all know that. Um, but it still does hinge on not only within our state, but a bunch of other states to get through it. But this January 2nd deadline is for everyone, and it's not going to happen, at least in the way it's happening for us, because they weren't working on it ahead of time like we started to here. So. Yay to North Carolina. Can you write us like a real smart letter that we could send out to people that we know? Well, we, we have, actually. Um, <laughs> the, the committee that I, I mentioned, we, we hammered out language and all threw it around as we do each week um, and came up with, I think, a really great letter. And uh, we have sent that out. Okay multiple times, uh, but I every opportunity that I can to add to that, I do because it's so critically important. I everyone. just didn't want to write us a letter. I wanted you to write us I a letter. I did. Okay. I did write the letter right. <laughs> with help from a few well, colleagues. Hey, I didn't I'm do it 100%. All of a sudden. No, yeah. no. Okay. Yeah. It was, it was a group letter from the lawyers on okay, that committee that wrote it. Absolutely. Thank you so much. <laughs> Anything else? I think that's enough for one night. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Uh, Mr. Commissioner, I mean, Mr. Chair, yes. I have one question for the county manager. Yes. Um, just want to see if Andrea or yourself have heard anything about the audit. Who? Any, any insight on the audit? I think the last word we heard was. Do we get to find the audit committee? For them? We get to find the guys who audit us that they don't do a job in time. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we will put the audit services out for bid um, okay. for the coming year, um, and I will say that it's not that they are not trying to do their job. I'm, I'm being facetious. Um, <laughs> it's we're waiting, still waiting on that compliance supplement. Okay. So that they can audit the ARP funds and submit everything at one time. And when do you think that'll happen? Waiting on U.S. Treasury. <laughs> uh -huh. Probably when you get that opioid money. What we are hoping that would happen is once final ruling has come out mm -hmm. with the ARP guidelines, 
that the U.S. Treasury would then be able to put out. Here's the compliance supplement for how we want auditors to be able to audit these funds. Once we have that in hand, then they can review our expenditures that we've had so far, which have been for the salaries, mm -hmm. uh, and then complete that, submit it to LGC, and receive our audit. So we are tying up the last little pieces outside of ARP so that once that compliance supplement is here, then they will be able to move forward. I, I guess my question is, and I had a feeling you were going to say that because uh, we've talked about this a couple of times, but I, I get really, audits are, uh, in my head, audits are when I get to let everything else go. I got everything else still here, and right. when I get it audited, I get to let it go. And mm -hmm. the weight on your shoulders is very well. You can, you can feel it. <laughs> and this is no different. And I guess what my question to you is, if, are we going to have th this, this, audit situation if, are we going to have this problem i call it a problem for lack of a better word when we spend this art money i don't believe we will once we get past fiscal year 21 okay. um, because what we would hope is that u.s treasury would not wait until june 30th of 2022 to finally release a their final ruling that's what i'll be looking for <laughs> I'm, I'm hoping that we will get it in I the next so few months um, because what, once they have that ruling, then like I said, they'll have that compliance supplement that auditors across the country will be able to audit and then will be able to file with LGC. Well, you know what, I wish I would have had a, uh, I wish I would have had some situations like this when I was in business because the, my company would made me go home for two weeks and I couldn't call anyone, couldn't talk to anybody from my company for two weeks until they did my audit. I'd love to tell them, hey, I get the next three months off. This is great. This is well, awesome. I assure you, I am not at all. <laughs> I know. Um, we are we are working very diligently to finalize the pieces I that um, finance is responsible for. Um, our auditors have talked to the LGC, um, so the state treasurer is aware of needing okay. that compliance supplement. Um, and we probably would have to file a contract amendment. And due to us waiting on the on the federal government would be a reason that the LGC would look favorable in extending the contract. Okay, excellent. Mm -hmm. Well, that's good news. Mr. Lashley, I believe the county attorney can assure us that unfortunately state statutes won't allow us to take three months off. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> any other questions of the county attorney? <laughs> well, one can hope. <laughs> okay, county manager. I have no report. All right. Thank you, sir. Uh, commissioner's responses or comments. Are there any? I think we did. I think we already made it. We have responded. Do we have a motion to adjourn? I make some motion. Is there a second? Second. All in favor, <laughs> signify by saying aye. Aye. Thank you. All right. Thank you, John. Okay. Thank you for watching the Alamance County Commissioner's Meeting. Commissioner meetings typically occur on the first and third Monday of each month in the Commissioner's Chambers at the County Office Building at 124 West Elm Street in Graham. The first Monday meeting begins at 9.30 a.m. and the third Monday meeting begins at 7 p.m. Changes to the meeting schedule will be posted on the county website at www.alamance-nc.com. The video of this meeting will be broadcast on Local Gov TV. Please go to www.localgovtvnc.com for more information about their schedule and to see more videos produced by your local governments. You can also access this meeting through our YouTube channel at www.youtube.com forward slash Alamance County NC or by clicking the YouTube link on the county website. Technical questions regarding this meeting's broadcast or production may be sent to our county webmaster at webmaster at alamance-nc.com. This address is for technical questions only. Comments and questions about the content of this meeting may be made to the commissioners themselves. You can find their contact information at the Alamance County website at www.alamance-nc.com. There, you can click on the link that says County Commissioners to learn more about the commissioners, read minutes and agendas of commissioner meetings, and find other other information about the county commissioners. You can also send mail correspondence to County Commissioners, 124 West Elm Street, Graham, North Carolina, 27253. Again, thank you for tuning in to the Alamance County Commissioners Meeting. Thanks for tuning in. If you're watching on YouTube, be sure to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date on all our latest video content. If you're watching on Local Gov TV, be sure to visit their website to see all of the content made for you by your local governments.